Welcome back to The Watch. We do things on the internet. We say things on the internet. That's our whole gig. Now here's Shad. That's correct, Oz. That was a, a, a distinct summary of our stuff. Mm. But the things that we do actually have a bit more focus. We are very interested in uh, what's happening in the culture, particularly pop culture, media, entertainment, and we do reviews, and we have a segment called Nightly News. And there was an interesting thing that came up recently, you could call it a bit of a controversy, that there's a lot to break up, break, like a lot to dig into and discuss, so much so that it's going to be... You know, it's going to take our time to really analyse fully, and we're dedicating a whole segment to it. This isn't the usual thing that we would do, but there is a large implications to the nature of YouTube, cancel culture, mm -hmm. uh, handling criticism and other things, that I feel is worth discussing, and that's what we do. We react to uh, news articles and then, and then discuss them. But we're not news. Don't ever mistake us for news. It will be at your detriment and your downfall. Your entire bloodline will be extinguished if you mistake us for news. No, we're not an authoritative source, except for our own opinions. We can speak authoritatively on, on our Oh, sometimes own we can. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I tell us not to. We don't need to censor Nathan. He'd have to talk for us to do that. Well, one time it did happen, and then, and then everyone's like, Oh, that's why it doesn't speak, because mm -hmm. anything I say just would get censored anyways. What was it? <clears throat> not important? Okay, yeah. Okay, so, there is a prominent YouTuber who's just de declared that she is leaving YouTube as a result from a vast amount of criticism that has been ongoing in response to a certain tweet. Now, already, if you are aware of anything about us, uh, there are a lot of things to talk about and also uh, be annoyed at and disagree with in regards to any of this that someone, especially in the type of tweet, we are generally against cancel culture across the board but that doesn't mean you can't disagree with people it's a matter of uh, understanding that you can disagree with people and still get along with them there is a mentality in the modern world today that uh, if anyone does anything or says anything i should say that they disagree with especially if they think it's offensively wrong that person should not be supported in their career and uh, people have been driven to suicide from it and i'm not kidding like, like uh, people have been got attacked in terms of and getting them fired from their jobs, their lives get ruined, and then they ultimately uh, commit suicide as a result. And so, I, that's terrible. Uh, and there are signs that the, this person is dealing with some severe mental health issues as a result of all this as well. Her name is Lindsay Ellis, if you haven't, aren't aware of, uh, of what, who she is. She makes media review kind of content, and she's made the occasional video that I thought was all right, but it's clear that I disagree vastly with many of her opinions and also her reviews of media. But guess what? There's a lot of people I disagree with that I get along great with. And that's one of the lost uh, um, virtues, I think, in the modern day. Well, name one. One? What one? One person you don't agree with that you still are great friends with. Name one single person. I dare you. It's impossible. Everyone you disagree with, you hate. Name one. He can't even name one. I he could name even, several. Can't even gesture to one. No, work. no, people that I'm really like. <laughs> how often do I disagree with people? So I have a larger YouTube channel called Shadowversity, which deals with uh, content that, uh, you know, sort of related to history, medieval fantasy, and medieval history. And I disagree with uh, many guys heaps, and we do amical reply videos, discussion, and things. Mm. So there's just one off the top of my head. Uh, I disagree politically very strongly with a lot of YouTubers that I still follow because they make good content. Uh, also, family members as well. <sighs> You know, I I find it interesting. There, and when I say disagree with, they hold opinions that I do. I I'm a religious conservative, and so mm. they have certain stances that I find abhorrent. But there's a difference between holding an opinion, okay, and then how they act as an individual. You know, and I generally gauge this: Would they treat a stranger with respect when they meet them, not knowing anything about them? You know, if they saw someone in trouble like they are like a, you know an old lady who needs help across the street not knowing anything about her would you help her across the street i'm probably the one that caused the trouble in the first place. <laughs> but generally most people yeah. believe in common decency yeah. and i think that's a good you know stance to begin with in terms of getting along well with people all right now if i was to cut off every single person that disagreed with me politically theologically uh, um uh, I'll barely have any people to associate with. I also, I'll be in constant conflict and seeming battle between wills 
all the time. And if I do believe what I, you know, my values are true, kind of means that I'd want to uh, convince people uh, of what I think is correct. And disassociating myself of them is a bad start in trying to convince people of it. The first thing to do in trying to convince people is having a discussion and at least having a connection. Sometimes it takes a long time. I've worked on this guy for years. Yes. He <laughs> <laughs> you look, I mean, you have made some progress in certain areas, but what I was thinking is when you were saying, you know, disassociate, have discussions with him, I'm just so tired of the discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest, right? Like mm -hmm. for me it's not so much as trying to discuss with them because it's literally useless at this point. They argue in circles. I don't know. I've convinced a number of people. Uh, look, some. Look, I'm not saying you'll ever, you'll win every battle, but you can certainly make headway in certain areas, mm. and then you can't in others. But the key thing at the end of the day is to keep the discussion open, or if not open, and you know you're not going to get anywhere, not having open conflict with them. When I say conflict, that can be verbal, but it cannot escalate. And so you want to maintain goodwill, get along with people, because okay. the world is going to fall into chaos. Like when I say conflict and chaos, it can escalate to some really bad stuff. It will. If we have this, if you disagree with me, you are an evil person. You'll, I don't think you'll ever convince someone in a single argument. I think it takes longer, longer discussion. But the thing that I'm more interested in is the idea that's pre prevalent in the modern world, and we see reflections of this with what's happening with Lindsay Ellis, and also uh, what Lindsay Ellis actually uh, encouraged against other people in terms of the idea of cancellation for having uh, wrong opinions and stuff, is uh, having an opinion or a stance that you think is immoral, you actually find offensive, and then directly condemning that person irredeemably as a result. Mm. And uh, one thing that helps me out, okay, is, okay, they, I, because, again, there are people on the left that hold views that I find truly abhorrent and immoral, but then are there other aspects of them that are not only believe in good things, but are doing good things? And I can see many people who hold opinions that I find, you know, offensive, who also do very good things, and, and uh, there's also a matter of intention. I don't think intention excuses immoral actions. You know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? But I can at least acknowledge that I can see people trying to do good according to what they think is good. And that's something. It's not everything. It doesn't redeem anything. But I can appreciate that these are people who are trying to do good in their own understanding. And if we can come to a better understanding of what is good, then our actions would come to alignment. But even then, right, even if we can't come to agreement in those areas, and there's areas that I find abhorrent uh, in terms of their opinions and beliefs, I can still see other aspects of them that are really virtuous and good. Mm. And so I can acknowledge that these are good people for the most part, and, not, and I'm not saying it broadly across everything, but as on an individual basis, I'll try and judge this. And uh, I find ground for me to be able to get along well with them. The standard at the world at the moment is if they believe in something evil, they are in, or they, they think they believe in something evil, they must be a wholly evil person, and they will not, not only not associate with them, they will encourage people to not support them in their work, their career, everything. It is an, like a shockingly aggressive stance that pushes to the destruction of people's lives. And that's why I think it's really important, even though Lindsay Ellis holds many opinions I disagree with, and she's even supported cancellation, like this type of cancellation before, like look at her view, Lindsay, you've made you know public statements about your views on JK Rowling, um, you've encouraged people to delete videos of videos that are made with people that have made statements that are deleted like the more recent one with is with tom scott and he made a collaboration with um an associate of mine actually jill bearup i've done a collaboration with her and uh encouraged tom to delete the video that he did with jill because in the past she made what people are interpreting as problematic statements and that's again supporting a type of cancellation um and by the way just on my note like association with jill we uh, disagree on a lot. Just have a look at our reviews of the last Jedi throne room fight scene, okay? We almost have diametrically opposed opinions of that fight scene, right? Doesn't mean that I can't get along well with her. I've done a collaboration with her on a small little um, uh, YouTube short that she's, she's done. And uh, again, 
because I think it's a virtue to be able to get along with people that you disagree with. And it doesn't mean that they're bad people. That's, uh, how could we try and change people's views about that? That get along with people who uh, you disagree with is not, a, a, not only a, is not a bad thing, but it's a good thing. Because what it, like, can we encourage anyone to really consider what the end result is about rampant cancellation? If I was to hold that same standard and cancel anyone who has opinions that I find abhorrent and immoral, right? And I would encourage, and I would say that they're terrible people. I would encourage people to unsubscribe, not support, and everything like that. And, every, and if everyone did that, that's the kind of standard that's being pushed. Where will that lead? Well, what we're getting now. Even worse, I, I think uh, there's like, because there are people who are trying to push back against this whole cancellation thing, and this is why I think Lindsay shouldn't be cancelled, and she shouldn't self-cancel her, you know, even though she makes content I disagree with. The fact is, I actually, this, the tweet that this is all, you know, sprouting from, I kind of, you know, her take was perfectly valid. Like, Ray of the Last Dragon absolutely had a lot of visual similarity to Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm. Uh, but then we go back to, again, that question about why people uh, vilify others so much uh, for having the wrong opinion, where will it lead to? I was letting that hang to try and encourage people to see the obvious conclusion. The obviously obvious conclusion is a type of massive division in society like we've never seen before. When I say like we've never seen, we actually have seen divisions in society to this level and they have always resulted into armed conflict. That's the end result. Yeah. Um, when you look at the ideological differences that were happening in World War II, the differences that people were having, like these aggressive differences in ideology, were pitting like you know family members against each other, brother against brother, and stuff like that. And it, and it did escalate into armed, large-scale conflict. And if you think it can't go that way, we've already seen violence, legitimate, real-world physical violence break out in these ideological differences. And it comes down to people not tolerating the other. In a different way to how they'd say it, you know. Yeah, there is not enough tolerance in society. Again, I don't see it coming from an a dip, like I only see it coming from one side. Uh, I see it um, enacted vastly more in one side. I do see elements of intolerance on the right, of course. Well, who's inviting who onto whose channel, you know? Well, I think there's more open discussion, absolutely, on the right. But there are, like, for instance, the reaction to this Lindsay Ellis thing. Mm. I have been tempted and uh, have felt my gut instinct reaction to this is uh, to condemn Lindsay and say, you get what you deserve. But I think that's uh, too intolerant. If we want to reflect the type of tolerance that should be in society, I think we need to be better. And that's why we're making this video to kind of discuss it in a more open and mature way. Uh, and also to try and support where we can support, not making any concession on our standards. For instance, Lindsay does not deserve to be attacked for the way she has been for her tweet. <laughs> like, what was her tweet? What again, that? she basically said yeah, something like, we should make a new sub-genre for uh, medias or movies or whatever uh, that look like Last Airbender or something like that, um, in reference to Rey and the Last Dragon. So like a Western anime? Yeah, I like, you yeah. know, um, Asian-inspired kind of fantasy, mm. which is usually a, a mesh of different Asian cultures and stuff like that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that too. Now, people would get offended so vastly about that speaks to some huge problems. There's uh, been a larger kind of development after this tweet that Lindsay gave, which is uh, sh the stress and uh, um, other mental health issues that have been resulting of this vicious type of criticism and the types of online attacks that's been lobbed against her is uh, causing her to now basically just leave social media entirely. She is leaving YouTube and uh, she has made a statement on it um, that's been shared online, and we have it here, that I'd like to go through and discuss, because there is a lot, uh, a lot to discuss and break down. And I actually feel it's inappropriate for anyone who disagrees with Lindsay to crow about it, say, good riddance, you know, thank goodness you're gone, or you get what you deserve, or anything like that. Because, uh, one, if we want to push back against this uncharitable, unforgiving culture, we need to be more forgiving and charitable. It's as simple as that. And so, also, we shouldn't cheer that someone is 
purposely taking away their voice to share their opinion. Uh, she's no one is though. She's taking away her own voice. She is. She is. But I think people are cele will be celebrating that she's decided to stop. And look, I disagree with a lot of what she says, but I don't want her to stop saying it. I would rather have a discussion about it and perhaps potentially come find where we see eye to eye. If there's differences that we can't, you know, ever agree upon, that's fine. But I think there are areas in which, who knows, maybe her opinion could be swayed or maybe mine could be swayed as we come to a better understanding. But that's now glossed and gone if she's it's completely been, cut herself off. It's been lost for a while. Well, one of the things that I hope would encourage potential discussion like this is if we can show that we're willing to be forgiving. Oh, we more than absolutely are. Yeah, but also show charity and also sympathy and compassion when someone's going through a really difficult time. Th I do admit there's some conflict I have because uh, I do feel Lindsay has encouraged a certain type of uh, cancel culture. In what way? Well, she made a video on J.K. Rowling mm. uh, being very condemning about her views on transgenderism, J.K. Rowling's views on transgenderism, and almost encouraging people to uh, not read Harry Potter or not support her or not give her any more money and things like that. I see that and I can't help and see a parallel between the type of care, because like, I hope Lindsay would be able to acknowledge that that had the potential to create a hate mob of the same level, if not greater, than the hate mob she is perceiving coming after her. What I, fi I find it sh like shocking, that even if you disagreed with J.K. Rowling's stance on things, mm -hmm. does that ruin the work of Harry Potter or any message you see behind Harry Potter or the value that it brought in your life? I, I don't know. I think there's an even deeper, got to roll back a bit too. Mm -hmm. She put out a post saying, a video saying, here's what, how I feel about what J.K. Rowling said. Mm -hmm. I, look, I completely disagree with everything she believes based off what you've told me. Mm -hmm. But I don't think she's responsible for any hate that gets directed their way just because you put out a video saying, I don't like you. You have an interesting point. Mm. Even though I disagree with that I'm not sure I agree, on because there's going to be a lot of people who watch that you will, you'll end up naturally convincing by the logic that you're presenting, mm. by the standards that you are saying, these are my standards and stuff. And the natural unavoidable result is the fact if some people start agreeing with you then they will naturally adopt the same kind of stance you have in not supporting the person. Yeah sure but you're not at fault if that person says I'm a death threat. I don't think you are. Well there's a difference between because I don't think Lindsay was in any way saying Oh absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, that's, that's my point. But I think she was saying I'm going off memory it was a long time since I watched the video but she was voicing concerns about supporting JK Rowling through liking Harry Potter because mm. of her stances. Well, let's try to be as nuanced as possible. If I make a video saying, I hate communism, and this is a video I probably would make, <laughs> I hate communism, here is why it is bad, here's all the history of communism that I can possibly put together, and why you should hate it. Am I responsible if someone's like, yeah, you know what, I hate communism too, and they start attacking communists on Twitter? No. The reason is, in that video, you didn't say communists should be shot. Did this lady say that? No, she didn't say J.K. Well, Rowling. Exactly. She wouldn't be responsible for death threats. Um, Besides, use helicopters, not bullets. That's a joke. Okay. So, yeah, I don't get it. There was a guy, a socialist, who got communists and he dropped them from helicopters. Oh. Yeah. Look, it was a joke. <laughs> um, okay, so... I can understand what you're saying, right? Mm. But... This is difficult for me. Like, if you are trying to say a certain group are bad, evil, vile people, bad, evil, vile, bad, evil, vile, again and again and again, to the point where these, you uh, create a picture in the whoever you're talking to, the audience's mind, that these people are beyond redemption and they are doing vile things, like even to the point where the audience now has the impression that this group of people are attacking or killing the people that the audience are associating with, mm. and then members of that audience go out and commit acts of violence against the people who are vilified, I think there is culpability on the person who was saying it. Well, it depends on how well-reasoned and justified it is, because there's an objective truth there, isn't there? What truth? There's an, well, there's an objective truth in reality, what has actually happened. Mm. And as content creators, all we can do is be like, okay, here's our interpretation of that. Okay, I see uh, what you're saying. It's an interesting point because, guess what? In World War II, Nazis were real and they were doing terrible things. Yeah. That was an objective truth and they needed to be opposed. And, and so that was the truth. 
The problem is, in the modern day, people accuse other people of being terrible, evil people when they're not nearly that bad. Sometimes not even bad at all. They're accusing good people of these things mm. to the point where they are encouraging hate and acts of violence against individuals and groups as a result. Anyway, so let's begin with some of the some of her statements on the matter and discuss. So we have our scribe, not scribe, you're the, our no orator. orator. Orator? Oh, okay, yes. Please dictate to us. I'll dictate to you, Oz. That sounds suggestive. <laughs> That's meant to be my thing. Okay, the, the title of this article was Walking Away from Omulus. This was going to be a YouTube video but I just don't have it in me to invite that kind of scrutiny. To be the last in the sick, sad line of YouTubers who get all weepy on camera and cry about how they just can't do this anymore. Boo hoo hoo. So let's do it by text instead. Well, I mean, this this is difficult because it doesn't, like, she has a following and they're going to want to know what happened if she just suddenly stops uploading. Mm. And so if she wanted to let them know that, um, Things are getting too rough for her. She made a Patreon post, and so this isn't like her making a big public statement, though she did tweet out goodbye. Well, to be fair, if she's making a Patreon post, who's the most likely audience to see it? The patrons. Her patrons. Why would she do that? To let them know that she's not going to make content? Yeah, but think about why she would do just the patrons. Why not the YouTube subscribers? Why not the people on Twitter? Well, it seems like she didn't want this to blow up, but it's going to, especially with the amount of stuff that she starts to talk about. Mm. Yeah. So she continues, I planned to move video content to Nebula, but I realize now that doing that is just keeping wounds wide open. My life ended nine months ago. What has been... Wait, what? Yeah, so this is where... Uh... Like, that's a concerning statement to me. She a ghost? She doing a Tupac? What's no, no, no. Like, so nine months ago, I think that's referring to it when she made the tweet. And, uh, like, that's a, new, that's a really extreme statement. Her life ended two months ago. Nine months ago. Oh, was it nine, oh, sorry, nine, nine, nine months ago? Nine months Wait, ago. Let me check something then, because her most recent upload... Well, then, yeah, because... She's made uploads since that time. Well, then there you go. No, 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 but she's... Uh, so, like, I think I've read some further stuff where she basically goes on to say that she was just an empty husk while making that uh, Yeah, so time. I, I'll finish this paragraph mm. then. Um, what has been taking up bandwidth ever since then has been a ghost. It's almost funny how many people will insist that I've lost nothing, you know, because subscriber count is the only metric for success and cancel culture doesn't exist. One YouTube channel chugging along on algorithmic inertia is not success it's just an engine driving on fumes so she's upset she's not getting enough subscribers no so this is this is again like when i hear that i can't help but see some vastly contrary things mm. and i don't mean i'm not trying to be critical i'm trying to be as um, generous in my interpretation of this as possible i would need to know what her metric of success is um because it I always see her videos get promoted by the YouTube algorithm vastly more than what, you know, I feel other channels, you know, get or that she necessarily deserves. Uh, I find that she's extremely successful in regards to views, not just subscribers. Also in a huge amount of support from her audience. She gets a lot of criticism and pushback. Uh, I know, you know, people have even made commentary videos on her videos just disagreeing so much really with everything that she says. And so I wonder if uh, she, what she's saying here is that success would be happiness. And if this is making her miserable, it doesn't matter about the subscribers or everything like that. She's missed the point of success then. Well, hang on. I think happiness should be a pretty large end goal for any work that you want to do, wouldn't it be? But you don't... Uh, look, I'm putting words into her mouth because she didn't say it was happiness. We don't know yeah. what her measure... Of, she just says that she's not being successful. And I don't know what she's referring to. You don't there. become successful by being like, oh, I'm not getting the amount of subscribers I want. Ah, oh, better quit. You have to keep doing what you do. Like you said, that's what you said. Yeah. The one thing that got you successful was you started off small, but you kept going. Yeah. And when everyone asks me about what I do, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, how did Chad get this? You know, he's just a massive nerd. <laughs> do you know what I always say? He persevered. That's the one thing that he keeps <laughs> telling me is that he kept going. It's that simple. Well, what I find, again, when Lindsay is saying this, right, if her channel was to stop growing, mm. 
mm. but she got the same amount of views and attention that she's always got. She would still be one of the more successful creators on YouTube, period. She's got over a million subscribers. Or her videos get very high views. Yeah. I mean, I have over a million subscribers on my other channel, Shadowversity, uh, yet it's still a struggle to hit 200,000 views each video, yeah. right? And some videos don't even reach that. I mean, I can more safely pass 100,000, okay? And that's... I look at that as a massive blessing, even though it, compared to my subscriber amount, it's not barely 10% sometimes if I can't hit the 100,000, right? And so... I do still try and remember and acknowledge that I remember when I had 50,000 subscribers, yeah. right? Uh, and so the amount of views I'm getting is huge compared to what it used to be. And I try and be grateful for what I have. And that helps keep me satisfied even when subscriber growth is really low or even views go really low. Uh, so again, it's, it's interesting. So she says that she feels like she's been dead since that tweet. and a ghost has been uploading since that time and again I feel this is more it sounds like it's reflecting some mental struggles that she's having uh, and that's concerning how many uploads did she do since um, oh, she's not a regular upload. Yeah, I think she's she, more like one a month usually I don't think that with the wait so and her videos but, are look at the views yeah 700k million 300k million 2 million almost 3 million almost 2 million yeah Look. So it's rare for her video to do videos do under a million. Yeah, and they're all over. And how many subscribers does she have? Uh, one, almost one point two million. But look, her Hang videos. On. Do I have more subscribers than her? Yeah, just. But like, if you see, understand. this is what I mean. I struggle to hit two hundred thousand views a video, mm -hmm. right? And she is smashing me in views. And so when she when she says that she feels she's not a success. I see her and I feel YouTube privileges her content way more than mine mm. and pushes it and makes it a more prior a higher priority in the algorithm way more than me. The views reflect it. And the views reflect it. And so when I hear that she's saying that she's not successful, I, I'm I'm surprised. I try and be charitable there that she must be looking at it in a different way, because I think at the moment I'm deriving much more satisfaction out of making my content and running my business than what she said. I think she obviously has been struggling emotionally quite heavily from the barrage of criticism she's received after making a harmless, innocuous tweet. And I think people who have been attacking her for that tweet, mm. that's the type of people that deserve to be called out for their bullcrap. Like, that is a type of immorality that I find repulsive, right? Mm. Attacking someone for, a, like one, there was no ill intent. I think you should always look at someone's intent. For instance, if I may make a statement that offends someone, all right, I think you should look at if I actively said it to upset someone or not. Did I say it to offend them or was I simply expressing what I honestly believe to be true? There's a big difference. And so... <laughs> There's a difference between me saying, you are so fat. You are the biggest, fattest, bogusly. You're worthless. You're so fat. My stomach, though. <laughs> There's a difference yeah. between we're friends, all right? Yeah, yeah. Between that and Oz. And say, say, Oz. You're 50 pounds overweight. I'm there. just a little concerned about your health. Mm. Um, uh, being, you know, overweight is not good. You're going to have health, you know, heart, heart problems. There could be heart problems. Be heart problems. Yeah. Your, your father has had several heart attacks, which is true, right? And I like you. I love you as a friend. I don't want you to die early. And so, can you, oh, there's obvious a difference. I'm essentially expressing mm. a same truth. Being overweight is not good or healthy, right? Mm. Um, but the delivery, one was obviously intended to cause him offence and upset him. Neither did. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was that thick skin, right? Hey! You see? Look at that. Thick skin. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Okay, just <laughs> Right? And so that's what I mean. And so oftentimes, there are opinions that I voice that are just genuine expressions of my beliefs mm. that are not trying to be said to upset someone, but people will take offences if they were. And I think people need to slow down. And this is this is what I've learned. That's what I need to do. I need to slow down when someone says something that I find really like disagreeable. Mm. Did they say it purposely to upset me in maliciousness, or did they say it just as an expression of their belief? Because if there's a big difference, if someone was saying it just to be malicious and cruel, that reflects that they're a mean, cruel person. But if not, 
then I choose not to judge them because they're expressing an opinion. To play devil's advocate, if you mm -hmm. put out a video, like, just to put out your opinion, like, mm -hmm. I don't like this thing. This mm -hmm. is my opinion, guys. Like, and you say it as simply as that. Well, then someone's going to comment, you don't like that thing? Well, I don't like that you said this thing. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? And, so, like, when I have little patience, I say, grow up and deal with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, having said that, I like the Mormon I will... one. <laughs> what? Like the Mormon one, the guy's like, wow, you don't know biblical history. Uh, yeah, yeah, I smack that down. When people accuse me of being immoral in my opinions that I'm holding, or that I'm purposely trying to mislead people and stuff, I will respond more aggressively. Because when you ascribe motive, that's... Now, I need to raise my hand. I have said things for the purpose of upsetting people. I'm not, I'm not above that. Look, okay, I have done something kind of similar to the thing is though i actually the reason this is when i troll i can be i can be trolling i control people because i think it's actually a good virtue to learn to not be offended at things mm. and to just laugh it off and so there's this controversy on my main youtube channel where i have purposely been very aggressive and, and um uh, critical of a certain weapon none well, less oh, we shouldn't name them shouldn't name them we don't want a platform awful <laughs> weapons <laughs> <laughs> and to, to me, one, why I'm willing to do it with nunchucks, I feel this sh really should be a, such an innocuous thing. It's not a personal thing, this inanimate object, but people do take it personally because they have backgrounds and everything like that. But I think it's good to uh, learn to be uh, made fun of and laugh it off because I get made fun of all the time and I learning to have a thick skin and just laugh with it, it actually uh, helps. It's a, it's a good, mature thing to develop. But like, look Shad. at Oz with how fat he is. Now I can just laugh it off. But here's the thing, Shad. If the nunchuck community ever finds out where you live, you gotta move. <laughs> I gotta move. <laughs> so, there's a difference between making fun of someone... Like, you saw me do it with Oz already. Making fun of someone in jest where you don't actually mean it maliciously. Mm. Like, I do not hate anyone who loves nunchucks, okay? Mm. Um, I don't like the weapon. But if people want to use nunchucks, all power to them. Have fun. And... Uh, I'll probably tease you for it in jest and fun because you can tease me for the fact that I look like a shaved rat right now. You look like a shaved rat. You know, or a bald cat, you know, like, bald cat. I feel naked. You're a rather handsome lad. No, I don't. Look, you got a bit of chunk like we all do, even Nathan mm. does, but you're a handsome lad. Yeah, I, so when people, it, I wanted to preface that if people say, Shad, you make fun of people and are mean and cruel. It's like, no, no, there's actually no maliciousness in it. I'm not doing it for the purpose to be cruel. I'm doing it for fun and to laugh, and hopefully people can just laugh along with it. Uh, and the, and I don't know, this is the part that maybe I'll do more self-reflection on. Because I know there are people who can't take a joke. And get really triggered at the smallest thing. And those type of people, sometimes I do go out of my way just to trigger them. Because if you're going to be that sensitive yeah. about such innocuous, pointless things like that, the effectiveness of nunchucks, you deserve to be upset because you shouldn't be so sensitive about something that is so pointless. The reason I can take all the fat, well, pretty much any joke that someone loves on me, mm -hmm. any, any uh, you know, uh, judgment that they can level at me is because, one, I've heard it all much worse <laughs> from much longer before. <laughs> that, and that's part of the thing you were talking about, is just getting used to it. Yes. Be, having a strong back. But also, like, I'm my own worst critic. So there's nothing that you could say to me, or you could say to me, Nathan, you've always said nice things to me, but there's nothing anyone could <laughs> say to me that I wouldn't say a thousand times worse to myself. So bring it on, <laughs> you, you bastards. <laughs> no, seriously, just, just mm. toughen up. The more you experience it, the easier it mm. gets. Wear it like armor and it can't be used yeah. to hurt you. And so it, this goes back to what I was saying about trying to find out if what someone s says is purposely malicious to upset in an act of cruelty. I don't necessarily think trolling is an act of overt cruelty. It's, they're trying to encourage people to just laugh about this. Don't stop taking yourself so seriously. Stop making this thing that is actually pointless and meaningless so seriously. Just laugh at it. But you can find many statements where people actually go out of their way to be cruel for the purpose of upsetting and being mean. Mm. The thing is though, when people voice opinions, and this is where I see a lot of the problems in the world, they think anything that is offensive is done in cruelty when it's actually not. Whatever, like, views about, like, the big hot, the hot button topics, right, in terms of the different things, views on abortion, views about transgenderism and gender, okay, like that. People often have basic opinions that are not meant, they're not trying to offend, they just voice the opinion, this is what I believe to be true. And if it's not actually done in cruelty to make, saying it to upset people, 
I think people do need to grow up and not realize that's just someone's opinion. Yes, but the reality of the situation is if you mention even as politely and calmly as possible and giving them all the charity you possibly can, if you mention these things and they don't go along with this, you know, dotted line, they will do everything they can to destroy you. Well, this is where it comes to this personal thing. Like, transgenderism is the big one because mm -hmm. they feel that if someone does not believe someone is whatever gender that they identify as, that's denying who they are. Mm. Now, they're, they're, like, there's this belief that such an expression of opinion drives people to suicide. Is that, that's, that's the conclusion. They would say that we're saying the same thing with cancel culture. That's what they would say. Well, I'm just being devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting, mm. isn't it? Okay, because uh, let's try and break that down. How does one affect one's life? One is literally taking away someone's livelihood. Mm. Okay, it can ruin their relationships, their ability to support themselves. That, that's vastly literally more. destroy their life. Yeah, when someone simply says, "I do not believe you're the thing that you think you are," mm. that then how much it affects that individual is literally their choice. You don't have much of a choice when you're fired from your job to say, I can, will still have money and support myself. Yeah. But a person who's, who has their lived experience denied can choose to not listen or ignore or... I... Usually I'd agree with you, but I disagree with you on that one. Yeah. I think that for some people, they let themselves get possessed by their emotion. Mm -hmm, they do. And so, like, if you say... They can't, oh, they, they can't fight against their emotion. They, they, they literally yeah. can't temper their emotion. See, that's one of the big problems I find. People need to learn to grow up. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, actually sometimes realise that their emotional reaction is not a valid reaction. I, now, one of the big things about this, why I had to learn, is like, I have a belief that identifies not only my identity, but every choice I make in my life. And it's my religion. Mm. And if you do, it, like, if you think religion is not tied to individual identity, you don't understand religion, okay? Especially for someone like me who um, takes it so seriously. It literally informs nearly every decision, especially every moral decision I make. It informed who I married, it informed what I do every day, okay? And it helps me identify who I am as an individual and what I want to do in life, all right? If you want to talk about a belief that forms someone's identity, I can guarantee you religion is one of them. Now, there are a lot of people who don't believe in God, okay? And tell, had have said, like growing up, have said, I am crazy for having this belief. Laughing. Agree with yeah. I was just laughing because I'm like, yeah, I've grown up in a yeah. Catholic private school. Yeah. I was the weird one. I was kicked out of one. <laughs> Guess what I said to a teacher once? <laughs> Do I want to know? Well, it wasn't that bad. I was getting bullied quite heavily, which I mean, I would be thankful for now. Um, but I basically told the teacher, I don't give an f what you say, and it was a deputy principal. <laughs> you know, you 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 grow up. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad I got out of there. But this is the thing, right? I would never force anyone to acknowledge the thing that identifies, helps identify who I am as an individual, which is my religion. I would never say, you are not allowed to say my religion is not true in my presence, mm. right? Because that is forcing a belief on someone else. Yeah. And if you are entitled to believe what you want, don't force it on others. And if people disagree, you need to learn to just accept it. And uh, well, surely if they're allowed to like, you know, like say your religion is invalid, I can be like, well, okay, I'm going to launch a crusade against you and reclaim the Holy Land. Like, <laughs> no. no, but I'm just saying, like, in terms of, like, you're allowed to say, I disagree. Well, I'm allowed to say, day is fault. <laughs> Surely that's reasonable. No, it's not. No? It's clearly, it's not reasonable. Okay. Only great. when they start to attack us. Oh, yeah. And we turn the cheek three times and then they continue to attack. Then we launch the crusade. I say, I say twice. Twice? I mean, and you've got four cheeks you can turn, but only twice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so, oh, look, I, it, admittedly, I actually do see a lot of hypocrisy in the standard of self-identification, okay, where there is this massive push and aggression to anyone who is denying someone's identity, yet they do not care at all about the things that people use to identify themselves because it's not held in the same, mm. same vein. Um, now, there is a mental health aspect to it, which I think people will bring up. Which and we, we can't talk about. Well, that, it can't. frames the discussion, though, because this is where people push back against the whole uh, 
discussion here mm. um, is that they will say religious people who are persecuted and told that they and yeah it is a type of persecution I was bullied heaps of being religious growing up okay um, for believe what they do and that tolling are uh, being denied their you know what they are how they identify themselves as an individual doesn't lead to suicide first of all it does in some instances you don't know how extreme some of the religious persecution exists in the world uh, but secondly there is an aspect of uh, you know, uh, if someone su commits suicide, mm. could we all ag agree that they were dealing with some mental health issues? If someone period, actually commits, commits suicide, suicide, like people who commit suicide, at least died. depression. Yeah, yeah. Like, like if you jump from a place, mm -hmm. if you actually do slip the wrist, and I don't you, know what you know, level of mental health issues they might be dealing with, but some type that pushes them to that level. Where and it ha beginning is obviously depression, but any number of things. Okay, um, and so. Uh, it is interesting that there are a lot of people who get bullied for any number of things, whether it's obesity, whether it's... <laughs> Why'd you look at me when you said that? Why'd you look at me? Whether it's religious persecution, whether it's being four-eyed, I was bullied. Hey! I was bullied for having a big nose. Uh, three eyes, oh, look, look at the size of my nose. Wait, keep, I can't see Nathan from behind Yeah, I, you see, right? Um, there is a vastly different amount of... Uh, um, uh, suicides as a result of those type of bullying versus the type of um, uh, oppression that people in the transgender community receive. The problem is, and this is where I get a bit stuck in the discussion, is that the level of suicide is just as high after um, post-transition and this is, they do a lot of studies to try and figure out how to help people who have gender dysphoria and uh, their suicide rate is just as high post-surgery and after and then you have the whole reality of uh, transition regret okay and it's a very confronting thing that does exist in the world that sh makes the discussion difficult to be had but the problem is if anyone ever voices anything there is such pushback because I think there is this hugely uh, I I can understand that a lot of people feel this is coming from a good place. Mm. They see the high amounts of uh, suicide in the transgender community, and uh, that's why there is such a pushback with, if anyone even voices something that grunts counter-narrative to their lived identity, that is a type of oppression because they feel it's pushing people towards suicide. Look, if it were, if it were only the trans community, mm -hmm. I'd agree with you. But mm -hmm. it happens with every other point that they hold sacred. And I say sacred because it's a religion to them. And so because of that, all I can... I don't know, I think the trans issue is the most aggressive one. Like Currently, but before well, that it was... Obviously, I'm, a, I'm against abortion. Mm. Okay. And or, I have... I've actually... Women... Like, women who aren't religious or don't dislike abortion are very... Like, I've just been talking about it once, and all of a sudden, like, Hey! You talking about abortion? How can you as a white man... And this was just, like, someone I'd known for a few months... Who had never done something like that before, you know? And you know me. If someone knows me for a few months, they know <laughs> how bad I am. So, like, it's a few things. You know, I think you have a point. I have seen some very aggressive reactions to any kind of opinions, yeah. all right? Not just the transgenderism, but I think they try and validate the aggression and push back in the transgender discussion because they feel they're trying to protect a vulnerable minority, as they see it. Maybe that magnifies it, yeah. To me, I think that ultimately makes it the situation worse. Uh, what do you mean? By trying to... Uh, they feel they're protecting this community from any type of things that confront their worldview. Yeah. That means that they're not capable of processing any challenge to their worldview or ignore things that they find offensive because they've been trying to be protected from it so much and they're not being exposed to anything that could be confronting. Well, that's the thing. They're not protecting trans people. They're just protecting their wealth. Well, it seems like by their over-aggression to protect this community, they're making this community more sensitive and therefore more aggressive. And that's an issue, I find. It's just poking the wound as well. You know, it seems like, like it. I, I mean, like, you know, if, if there's a particular soft spot, you know, just, like, treat them as regular people. If mm -hmm. they, you know, if they want to make different choices, you know, judge them by... Well, that's that should be the ultimate reality. Yeah. I have no issue with people believing whatever they want to believe. Why? Because I have very sacred beliefs that are some very different to a lot of people. And I want the right and privilege to believe what I want without being attacked or judged for it, right? Mm -hmm. So I will not judge them for their beliefs 
doesn't mean I have to agree with it. Or acknowledge. Mm. This is the difference. I don't expect people... When I say acknowledge, that's like saying, don't take the name of the Saviour in vain in my presence. Mm. Right? To acknowledge my faith, I would be enforcing that, trying to control everyone's language. Mm. And look, I find when people swear by the name of Jesus Christ, the height of offence. Like, I find it more offensive than uh, severely offensive words, right? Mm. But I don't force people to change their language around my presence, because that would be then trying to enforce enforce my beliefs on them for the sake of my feelings. Mm. Well, I, I, speaking of taking the Lord's name in vain, mm -hmm. I've actually noticed so much since converting that it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Literally every movie, everything you watch. We it's... watched the first Matrix yesterday, yeah. and the ones that really ring out is they say it at yeah. least twice, maybe three times in a, in a very aggressive fashion. That. Dude, I counted like 20 times. Did you? Seriously, mm -hmm. man. Every fight scene, every... Mm -hmm. like, uh, mm. It's funny as well, because I... Like, having younger nieces and nephews watch lots of kids' movies as well, and it's just as clearly blatant there. And whenever a kid's movie says heck and gosh, I salute it. I'm like, <laughs> good job for, you know, having clean language for once, because so many of them now as well, just... Yeah. On that note as well, I will also push back against over like religious zealotry and it happened like there is the religious um uh, right that we were going crazy against harry potter and dungeons and dragons <laughs> and tries to be over sensing and to me that's the same type of thing as the trans community trying to impose you must acknowledge my belief that of my identity you must acknowledge it. if you don't you're a terrible person like to me i see an equivalence there of two sides trying to impose their beliefs upon other people and that I feel no you should be allowed to believe what you want to be fair Harry Potter is... literally is witchcraft <laughs> literally I actually I would not say literally okay it, not... it is literally called witchcraft but the it's a depiction of it it's a vastly different depiction of witchcraft that has existed historically they have a spell that kills people <laughs> vastly different I will say, when I say people are allowed to believe what they want to believe, mm. so long as it doesn't infringe upon the rights, not the feelings, of others. But that's, they conflate the rights and the feelings. Anyway. So, oh really, look at the discussion we got, I just thought, oh, that, that spring that first paragraph. But, but hey, I, well look, I don't know how long this video will be, but it, I think these are important things to actually acknowledge and talk about. And really, like, I think that's the golden standard we have to try and promote. Let people believe what they want to believe, so long as it doesn't infringe on the rights, not the feelings of others, and if you're offended by someone else's belief, and if it's contrary to your own, you do need to grow up. And just accept that you can't control the beliefs of other people. Yeah, and careful of the community. You can try problem. and convince, mm -hmm. and you, by long-suffering, discussion, patience... Long-suffering, what's that? Talking to me. Uh, every day with just, you, Just yeah. see me with Oz, <laughs> and you'll see long-suffering. <laughs> I have quite a few fans out there who love to sit with me. Um, but seriously, I, and look, you're going to find you're not going to be able to convince any, like everyone. And, and look, there are views that I have that are ingrained, not only with my understanding and interpretation of reality and what logic and science is and everything, but also my religious beliefs, that there are views that I'll never change on. Mm. So what are you going to do? You have to cancel, you know, me, destroy, try and destroy my life, disassociate every single thing, never watch my videos at all, or we could learn to get along. And I'm willing to look at the things you create, and you would have to be willing to look at the things I create. For instance, I'm still willing to watch a Lindsay Ellis video. Not all of them, because I agree so much that usually it's a good indication that it feels like I'm going to disagree with the, the future videos that she comes out with. But if it's got an interesting pr proposition that I want to hear her opinion on, I would never say I would never watch it just because she made it, because I know we disagree on so much. Mm. But there are people who have that standard with me. I'm, I'm a conservative. Oh, yeah. No, I'm a conservative, and I've dared voice even some of the most tepid conservative talking points, or I am associated with people who they feel are immoral. I, they will never, you know, mm. watch any of my... Guilt by association. Never... And this is... I actually go out of my way to try and get along with people I disagree with. Just think about that, right? So it doesn't mean I agree with everything. I agree with other things. I was like, so it doesn't mean I disagree with everything. It doesn't mean I agree with everything. Yeah, things are more nuanced, obviously. But, yeah. Um, 
And again, if that's their standard they put on me, they're just trying to encourage me to have the same standard to then dissociate with them, with everyone I disagree with, but I choose to be more mature. Mm. Be honestly, to be better than that. And uh, well, if you really want to be more mature, you could have kept this. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made, and I'll leave it at that. I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what your mum said? Oh, that was what I was implying. Nice <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Like that was a really mean thing you could interpret it as saying, but I, it was done in jest to just laugh at stuff. Yeah. Okay. Don't take yourself so seriously. You need to laugh about things. Just, yeah. If you sweat the small stuff, you will yeah. drown. All right. And. Uh, I used to actually be against that type of humour, but I've learned and realised that sometimes you just have to laugh at the darkness in life. Who taught you this? Who, well, who helped you learn this? Well, look, you helped me a bit. I will do oh, that. thank you. For but that I story. already had that understanding. Before. Yeah, but dude, like, I have, I have helped you. You have, you have really helped me encouraged making fun of retards. Re <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like, what you're, you're saying before about the religion thing. You know, right? you know, one of the things that I like, right? I've acknowledged many times. I actually don't think you're obese, but it's no, but it's fun. But it's funny because it's just a joke, right? And so part of the reason is, is these types of jokes that I make are funny because I obviously don't believe in them. Okay, okay. The reason I can bear them is because, like, for example, you know they're untrue. Yeah. I, well, no, they. Aha! Aren't. I got it. I'm I got a, it. I'm not offended by reality. But here's the thing, right? So I've heard it all before. I, when I was when I was getting bullied, I wasn't getting bullied for my religion like you were. I was getting bullied for being a bit chunk, right? Mm -hmm. I was bullied for a, a lot of things, right? Oh, I'm okay with that. Can I, because also, not just my religion, I was bullied mm. for having a big nose, I was bullied for being a big dork and a mm. weirdo. I, I like Spider-Man, and that, and this was before the movies, and that was like a kiddie thing, and so I was really bullied for liking like kiddie stuff, yeah. Spider-Man, and all that. But now, the stuff that like really irks me, if someone attacks me for, is the religion thing. If someone attacks my fundamental beliefs... Well, that's something you need to deal with, honestly. No. I'll deal with them. No, no, this is the same point. <laughs> I'll get you. But look, th th already, let's unpack that a bit, okay? Because <laughs> one, you're understanding that it is more offensive when someone says something that challenges your fundamental identity. Well, because I'm used to being, I'm used to the physical stuff, the mm. things that, like, is yeah. actual. This, it, it hits harder, doesn't it? It hits harder because yeah. I'm used to it in yeah. a different way, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, this, again, let's look at all sides, right? Mm. Because. Religion is a distinct aspect of someone's identity. Yes, it's how they frame the world. I would actually say it's even more... Um, I, it helps frame more of your identity as an individual than even your gender. I get to, I, when I say it, it informs every decision I make, I'm not kidding, okay? I'm praying for a, for Interactions a Christian between people. GF. <laughs> <laughs> Interactions between people, everything. And if you disagree with that, uh, you're fine to, all right? But I wonder, because that's an opinion that could really offend people. Mm. It's like, you do not take my belief or my identity of my gender as seriously as I do. I don't have to. And guess what? You don't have to take my religion as seriously as I do either. That's the point, okay? Um, but I find it interesting that it affects you to a much larger degree. And it encourages you to be more, respond more aggressively. Absolutely. But that's the thing that we need to grow past. Well... It's not doesn't mean that we can't defend it. I, I remember what, that you've seen me in responding to comments when people actually said I'm a liar and that what I'm believing is utter bullcrap and supporting immoral things and all that stuff and literally saying blatant lies about my faith. Well, that's when I respond pretty as like, all right, I can smack that down and I will. Okay. Mm -hmm. The thing is though, that person was trying to tell me that I needed to believe something different. I think that's the key. All right. Am I telling a transgender person or a person that believes in abortion or anything like that, stop it. <laughs> now, abortion is one that obviously is going to be a larger discussion on. <laughs> okay. If you want to do stuff to your own body, sure, go ahead. But then they conflate that. It well, is. again, it gets all very complicated. Um, I actually find that to be a more um, a difficult thing to see eye to eye on than even transgenderism. Okay. Because if you want to believe what you, you know, whatever you identify as, go to town. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't force that belief on other people. Just like I won't force my religion on you if you don't want it to. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the abortion one though. Whew, that's where I, at the very least, I would try and get people to understand why people like me have such an issue with it, mm. and try and understand the two sides of it. And I know there are people that I can't convince on the topic. And so if I can't convince it, 
I don't, I'll, I kind of stop trying to push it then because it's wasted breath. Mm. That's how I feel talking with the uh, people on the far left. Yeah, I can see that. Well, it's this whole thing while we're doing this discussion with Lindsay and stuff. I don't know if Lindsay will ever watch this or not, but maybe there are people who are following the controversy that are considering it and are willing to discuss. But I would like to think that even with the people that are saying I, I felt I could never get anywhere with abortion, maybe there are things that challenge their worldview that might actually make a time when we could have a further discussion on it. I hope so. Mm -hmm. But can I just say, man, like, mm. it's so much harder to take you seriously now that this is gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fresh new one, isn't it? It is. <laughs> the problem is, I know it's true. And I hate well, it. don't be offended by it, because it's reality. I, well, I, will be, I, I won't be offended at you, mm. but I will be annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, dude, if you need some, like, curly hair for that, I, co I can't cut my beard, but I can get curly hair from another place. It, That's gross. It'll Shut match up. the same oh. shade as well. Hey, uh, let's let's continue on. <laughs> this this discussion is set to be ten hours, so I don't know. We'll, we'll, we obviously won't have enough time to go through it because it's actually a long article. She yeah, we've only done one paragraph. We've only done one paragraph. The second paragraph continues. Many will say this is being melodramatic. That my life isn't over. That there was absolutely nothing stopping me from brushing myself off, building back building back up goodwill and shutting up and playing the game. And I tried that. In a way, I suppose that's good that I did uh, because I needed to learn the hard way that there was never going... that that was never going to work. There is no uneffing this. You can't find the energy if there is nothing left to convert to it. So, last, last yeah. sentence. You can't be a better person if you are nothing but the hollow shell of one. Oh, I, that is some really concerning um, dialogue. She essentially said that people think it's melodramatic. I could pick myself up. I tried it. It didn't work. There's no uneffing this. She and she's essentially she's basically saying her life is ruined. From Twitter. Now, uh, I, I don't know really how to respond because there's so many ways to look at this, oh. right? There's a cynical side, and I, I, I try and put my cynical side in check, but I acknowledge it, and then I want to maybe I don't discuss it. Like, that is almost suicidal language right there. Like, and if it is, Lindsay, you need some support. Like, stop talking online. And this is the last thing you would want to do if you're actually at that level. Which then creates my cynical side, because if she's actually at that level, why would she be doing something that's going to make it so much worse? Like putting a thing up. But again, her. if she's ha struggling with so much mental health issues right now, she wouldn't be aware that this would be like. Does she think that this would ha like get sympathy? I don't know, but it's. Can I give my? But the other side to it. This is the bad cynical side, right? Is there are people who claim to be that far gone to get sympathy and attention. We've seen, and the the problem is, there is the reality that people do do that. They have done it. And so that helps ruin it for situations when people might legitimately need help. And now, because of past situations like that, I, I, God, I, I don't know. I mean, you would always tough. have to err on the side of safety and assume that this is serious. Because that's like, if, it's, if it is serious, you don't take it seriously, it could lead to some bad things. The reverse is that if it's not serious and you took it seriously, at well, least you haven't... Are we, encouraged a uh, worse outcome. Are we partly responsible if we don't believe what someone says? <sighs> like, look at look at the justice system. You've got 12 people deciding if someone's guilty or not. Well, the, I, you raise a really interesting point. My, my current take on it, right, mm. is... Uh, I think people close to her... Like, and, the, and it's their responsibility. Like, if, when you have relationships, especially family... Mm. Okay, you have a responsibility to look after one another. It's just flat, all right? Dominic and if this type of language ever comes from someone who you are close with, you have a responsibility to try and help that person. Mm. Does that responsibility extend everywhere? Should you believe all people who make a claim when there is a lot of false claims in the world? Well, Plus, that's if you're going to trade it with every person in the world, you're going to be very tired and very busy. Yeah. yeah. So cut the thing in half and just do believe all women. Just save you some time. See, I, again, like, because <laughs> I am a, genuinely a very charitable person. I want to help people who are in trouble. And when I hear this, I want to give them the charity that they deserve. Mm. 
yet I don't like being tankered advantage of. And there are people who have taken advantage of other people's sympathy a lot in the world. Mm. And there are certain warning signs that I can't help but acknowledge the fact that this is done so publicly. I don't know enough about mental health to actually make a call if someone is really having suicidal thought. Don't they usually become more reclusive? And it's hard yes. for them to reach out for help? Yeah, um, I think so. I'm not a mental health professional. See, I'm not either. I... We're not an authoritative source. Do not ever don't, mistake us for don't. one. Don't. Don't even have that thought enter your mind. But that is some really troubling language that she has there. And if this is any way serious, she needs to... She's getting off the internet. Well, she says she is. One, she should have just not made such a big thing out of it and just cut it completely and go see some professional help to help her deal with this stuff. I think that make it worse. I think what she needs to do is get back to work. Uh, if she puts a video out, a video essay, and they're high quality video essays, whether I agree with them or not, they are high quality. She has great rhetoric. Yeah. She can voice her opinion in a very uh, easy to listen to mm. way, and she has skills. Yeah, if obviously. she just puts it out and mm. just keeps getting back to work, she'll put all this behind but her. But she said she has been doing that and has mm. felt like she was a ghost. Disagree. If she actually puts something out, then... Oh, no, no, no. You, you can't disagree with her definitive statement that she did this and this was her legitimate response to it that's her statement but i'm not i'm saying i disagree that she might have done that well i would take her statement i have no reason to say that she's wrong in the sense that she when she says she tries it that it hasn't helped like i would have nothing to go on but to assume that she really has tried to can pick her up by the bootstraps as she said she did and when that did this, it didn't work when did this happen this happened nine months ago nine since months then ago. she's brought out like five videos Five or more. Yeah. So what's going on? Like I don't understand. Are I people think still attacking I think it, yeah. I I think it's been the continued criticism, which it. honestly, the people doing it are scum. Stop! Like th this is what I mean. Attacking people for such like this is such an innocuous, not even offensive thing. Let alone the things that people usually that cancel mobs really go after people for being offensive. Like, this is a nothing. But so I don't know. I said we need more anime. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, sure, the, the person in me wants to hate that. Okay, when I say scum, I need to rein it in and contextualise it, right? Because I don't know what level of criticism this is. There are people who respond as emotionally damaged as what Lindsay is to people offering tepid criticism on, I think you were, just like, I think you are wrong, versus literally you are the worst person for saying this, blah, blah. I don't know what level and what amount on each side. I don't know if it was just a couple of people calling the worst person or if it was a large majority. Um, well, let's use us as, a, as an example, right? Okay. The Wheel of Time reviews we put out, there were particular people calling us sexist, racist, homophobic. Like some these... disgustingly yeah. vilifying things that were all blatantly untrue. Yeah, all because we said we don't like this for these reasons, this is mm -hmm. a change, all that. And they, were, they they framed it to be so bad they couldn't even repeat most of it. They literally said that, mm -hmm. you know? And so, like, well, there you go. Well, again, we've got thicker skin. <laughs> yeah. There's, the, there's that. Um, and so when I look at this situation, there's too much I don't know to really make a definitive call on because, like I said, if this is just people saying... I disagree with them. I wouldn't call them scum for doing that. I'll call people scum saying, you're the worst person in the world, how dare you, I hope you die for saying that. Those people, type of people, are absolute scum. Can you say that to, like, can you, can you not say that to everyone? Is there a person that you can say that to? Can say what, what to what? That, what? Oh, you're that, a terrible person. You're a you terrible should. person, you should, like, stop, I hate you. Is there any group of persons or single person you can say that to? I would never go so far to wish death upon someone unless they have done something beyond redemption in action. Okay, I was going to say, if you said, if you said no, I'd be like, well, what about Hitler? You no, Nazi? no, <laughs> beyond redemption in action. Like, like school shooters, mm. hang them up by the end trials, draw and quarter them. I, that, like, I get so angry with that type of evil, a clean, quick death is too good for them. I want them to suffer and be punished and regret beyond fathoming comprehension for what they did. Right? I, I don't believe in the uh, in execution. I think killing someone should only be done if they're a direct threat to you at the time. Like, if a, if a cop shoots a school shooter while he's gone on a rampage, there you go, right? But if you've captured the guy, you know, like, what good does killing him do? Just lock him up in a hole for the rest of his life. What good does it do? It, it's satisfying. I'll give you that. 
I want them to regret with every fiber of their being mm -hmm. for the action that they did. And one way you can do that is by making them suffer. Yeah, <laughs> nothing makes you suffer more than being locked in a hole with no human contact. Yeah, anyway, I, I have so little sympathy for truly evil actions. Mm. Because I think actions are a vastly more potent and effective result or manifestation of what people believe. What they say is actually different. So, your actions are a true reflection of your belief. Yes. Not necessarily what I say. You can say you believe in something because the days, days come home. Like, you can say you don't believe in murder, but it doesn't mean spit if you actually murder someone. Well, that murder I committed was accidental. I just want that to be clear. That it wouldn't be murder if it was accidental, it would be manslaughter. But anyway. Well, I, I thought it would be a good meme, okay? Like, well, it wasn't. You <laughs> failed. Um, yeah, you woke up after it anyway, so... What am I talking about? <laughs> Just ignore me. No, no. So, uh, when you were asking, like, you know, what is the thing that would push me to want to wish death upon someone? It obviously takes some extremely evil actions. In terms of uh, what people say, mm. I am aware that people spout off bullcrap so much, and with many cases, they don't even believe what they say. It. When has anyone that you know done that? Sometimes they purposely say grossly offensive things just to get a reaction out of people. <laughs> Who would do such a thing? I know, right? An awful human being. I want them cancelled. So, one, the amount of stock I put in people's words varies based on context a lot. And even if they say some really grossly vile things, I would need more evidence to confirm if they're really that vile as an individual. Um, and so anyway, I, it would be very difficult for me to be pushed to the that person needs to destroy their whole lives based on a tweet or a word. Or Especially something. when it was something as innocuous as we need more anime. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me two years ago, I'd be like, yes, get rid of that person. But now, Shad's taught me that anime isn't that bad. <laughs> it's taken a long time. Yeah. Remember, right? Long suffering, patience, and you, you know, just, just, <laughs> Patient, convincing, and discussion on the subject. Will that ever happen with Wheel of Time for you? <laughs> like, oh, you know what? After they can try. Hours. Like this thing, I. It is not impossible mm. for my views on Wheel of Time to be changed, but you need to address my valid and objective criticisms, okay, and prove that what I am seeing can be legitimately interpreted differently based on evidence. Mm. It's going to be a long time with these writers. Well, if I'm objectively correct in my criticism, that would technically be impossible. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> but there has been times when people have been able to change my mind by them showing something that can't be objectively disproven. They showed the evidence, okay, mm. and that my interpretation was wrong, mm -hmm. and I have changed my view. Okay, so it can, it, ha it has happened before. The newest Spider-Man? Please tell me not that. No, not that Spider-Man. Oh, good. No, but like my my opinion has been changed before. Okay. But it, it, takes, oh, I know, yeah. it takes evidence and objective, you know, logic. Okay? So let's continue then. Okay, so she continues. 2021 has been the worst year of my life. I'm traumatized by it. To this day, I still have people scolding me about how I handled it, and that I should have handled it differently. That I shouldn't have controlled my stands. As if I have the capacity to know. So when she says stands, is that her followers? Is that like a Yeah, it means man? like simp follower fan sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> she calls her fans her stands. Because so, just on that note, like, you can't control people. You can encourage and denounce. Yeah. Like, for instance, uh, I will denounce um, people calling other people aggressive names or attacking them uh, physically who, dis who love Wheel of Time. Right? They're allowed to like Wheel of Time, I dislike it, but don't hate on them for just liking a show. Yeah. Okay? But also, on the th thing, 2021 has been the worst, your worst the, year. The thing is that... Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is though, a lot of people who watch our reviews on Wheel of Time, right, mm -hmm. will probably, if they agree with us, will end up hating the show, and disagree with people who dislike the show, and there's a higher chance that they might have uncharitable views towards people who are now trying to support the show and keep it going when they dislike it so much. Mm. Is that our fault? I would say yes, but not the actual cruel... If anyone does any measure of cruelty or meanness or calling other people names for liking the show, mm. we've never encouraged that. Mm. We denounce it. But we have we, we have called certain individuals very mean, aggressive things, like the creator's talentless hacks. Um, well, I mean, I'd say that's one of your objective takes. Well... <laughs> 
Uh, I have personal issues against certain people who worked on the show for the insults that they have done to something special and the Wheel of Time and other things. Especially when they like openly say we're going to spitefully mm. change stuff because of you. you yeah, know? that was pretty bad, right? <laughs> um, well, what I'm getting at here is that you can only can encourage or control your audience so much. I don't think that a creator is going to be culpable for everything your audience does just because they watch the whole that's that whole thing that because some terrible person that did a really bad thing said subscribe to PewDiePie in the action it's, it's PewDiePie's fault no it's not that at all all right um and so no I, I don't think she should be held responsible for all the actions of her audience um I think a lot of her audience probably came out in defense of her mm. I don't know they're trying to accuse her that they did something wrong as a result of her tweets and I'm like did she like what well, I don't know People started hating on Ray the last day. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but then she continues, as if I had the capacity, uh, capability to know uh, what these strangers were saying on Twitter while I was crapping uh, blood for weeks on end. What? <laughs> what do you mean to know that? <laughs> well, how? If it's to contextual, like, it wasn't her stress that caused that? Yeah, I, I, think don't, know. I don't was, think stress it makes it you crap blood. It was her stressing out about how her fans were dealing with all the Twitter controversy. That is that is some extreme mental and physical reactions to stress. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm not a doctor, nor am I an authoritative source. Hey, Never think that. Well, hang on. Uh, uh, stress can cause some really severe physical things. I know that. Things, okay? But I don't think it can literally make your bowels erupt blood. Unless you've, in the stress you're, of the moment, you're you not just a doctor. shoved I'm, something up there. I don't know. I'm not saying anything. I just, like, I don't, I don't, in I don't, the stress, know. did she sit on a blender? Like, what happened? No, look, stress could cause other pre-existing conditions that could lead to that to re-manifest because her immune system could be shot and stuff. Yeah. Like, there... So... I felt... It's just... It's, like, I'm not saying... It's wrong. I'm not a doctor, but I could actually see ways that stress could trigger stuff like that. But it would have to be based on a pre-existing condition, according to my current understanding. That sounds like authoritative talking right there, Shen. <laughs> I'm saying I don't believe. No, I'm no, no. There's sure. um, there's actually conditions like ulcerative colitis, um, inflammatory bowel disease, and stuff that cause people to pass blood. Um, uh, um and again, uh. It can go up and down. It's actually an autoimmune disease. The uh, the the actual immune system starts to attack your uh, bowel system, um, uh, and it causes it to yeah, pass blood. Oh. I will. Uh, and, and so, see. if stress then is affecting someone's immune system and stuff mm. like that, it could cause pre-existing conditions to inflame. All right, I um, concede. I concede. Sounded like I was speaking authoritative then, but <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like a doctor. <laughs> um, can you take a look at this for a second? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> a big red spot I need dealt with. So, anyway, I, that is extreme. Like, if she's going through that, right? Yeah, I would say you'll probably get off of the interwebs um, and just unplug if it's causing that, okay? As to explaining it to her patrons, this was a patron post, it wasn't a public statement. It's gone viral. It's probably gone viral way more than she intended. I under like. Is she going into way too much detail than what would be appropriate to what she's going through? Well, you, you know, women. They look. I'm not saying that she's just because she's a woman she's being overly dramatic. But women, when they have problems, they're more likely to voice them. Men are more stoic. Is that not true? Well, yeah. Men internalize their problems more and sort them out in their heads. Women will verbalize it, and that's how they deal with yeah. it. Yeah. So uh, on average, we're talking yeah. about average. And this, you might call this simpery, but she's got a bit of sympathy from me because she's a woman having problems, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not sure whether I completely trust this lady or not. Um, look, I can understand the skepticism. I'm going to be charitable and just assume that everything is truthful and uh, hopefully she'll get the help sh that she needs. Uh, I, uh, what the re and look, I hope this video doesn't cause any more stress upon her. That's not the point of this video. The, what I actually is the discussion that has caused it. Everything that's happening around it, the cancel culture, the mentality, how to deal with it, all, all, and all the things that we've already talked about was the purpose of us, us looking at this as a springboard to larger discussions. And hopefully the end goal, what we're really trying to hopefully achieve in this is for people to learn to be more tolerant of others and get along with people who you disagree with. That's the, what we need in the world. Because mm. if not, this is what happens. It can ruin people's lives. 
Lindsay doesn't deserve it, regardless of how much I disagree with her on anything. And most people who get attacked this way don't deserve it. Like, this vitriol, this unforgiving nature of the internet is disgusting. I hate it. I'm still on the fence about it all, man. I just don't know. Like, cause the only it goes way... too far. You have to admit, it goes too far. It goes too far if you're sending death threats and like, I know where you live. Uh, yeah, I'm not... Because this is the other thing. I think legitimate criticism mm. is, is perfectly justified. Yeah. And, okay? and I don't know if what's, whether she's got and, death and, threats or what. And I am just entitled to voice my dislike of the Wheel of Time or oppose an ideology and stuff. The difference is in hating people for it. Mm. Okay? I have a good, I have a good uh, way to fix this. If a bunch of people are sending you death threats over Twitter, Instagram, whatever, just take a big old screenshot of them and post them on the internet. Boom, there you go. If they're going to send you death threats, well, I'll use my power to show everyone who you are. People, but the thing is, fighting is a stressful thing, even if you can fight and win. You Some people, f- sometimes for people, it's just too much. And I get that. Yeah, but fighting the urge to drown when you're underwater is a stressful thing. But if you don't, you're going to drown. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. This isn't a one-to-one to drowning. Like she, well, she, She's trying to do what she thinks is going to be best to help her out, and she's unplugging, basically. She's giving if, up on... If people are attacking you, mm-hmm. you, have a, you have a responsibility to fight to defend yourself. That's just my belief. Mm-hmm. Whether it's they're attacking your livelihood, they're attacking you, know, you as a person, you should, def- you should defend yourself at the very least. You know, I agree. Okay. Uh... Is this her way of fighting back? It's a pretty weak way. She's admitted defeat. No, she's trying to get away from it, really. No, she's admitted defeat. She's like, I'm done. I can't take this anymore. You win. Well, she tried fighting. She said she tried to fight. Look, because I understand people have a limit. Okay, Mm -hmm. When you say people have a response to fight back, I do agree with that, but I also understand when it gets too much. And the fight itself is actually causing nearly as much harm as what the initial attack did. You can only deal with so much stress and conflict. And uh, there comes to a point where you need to get away from it. I get that. That's real. And I've held that in my own life. Well, okay? obviously, there's, there's, you know, in conflicts, retreats, but you, should, yes. you shouldn't stop defending yourself. You shouldn't let someone be like, I don't think she's awful. capitulating to much criticism at all. I haven't seen many times where she's ever said I was wrong about stuff. Um, I, did she, I'm did. i not even sure she's re- apologised for the tweet. I don't think she should, but she maybe did. Well, there you go. She's pleased to no one in that case. Oh, she's okay. capitulated to the people who I don't, want we to don't go know, on. I don't know if she has or not. Well, she, okay, well, mm-hmm. if she has or if she hasn't. She's capitulated to the people who want to go on, and at the same time she hasn't apologised to them, so they still don't like her. And she's leaving the internet, so her fans will be upset too. Can't please everyone. Pick a side. That's how it always goes. This, I think she's seeing this as her only option at the moment. Mm. It's, it's obviously gotten too much for her. Um, uh, I'd say get your fans that love you and keep on fighting. There is a lot of support for her, okay? She has a lot of... But that's... Like... People deal with um, criticism differently, but there is a general trend that one critical comment is usually... affects you far more emotionally than a hundred positive comments. I mean, if I got a hundred positive ones and then one critical one... I guess I do you pay remember, more attention. Yeah, exactly. You remember the critical ones more. But, but they, at the same a, time... There's an unbalanced effect, and that's what I think is happening. That is irrational, though. As, as much as I, I agree, know, right, I it's know. irrational. It is irrational, but it is the reality that most people deal with. And I think because there is so many critical ones that is so hard for her to ignore, and this is what most people find, mm. it drowns out any positive support that could help her get through it. Yeah, I just, I look, I just think if you believe what you actually believe and you're not just saying it, you should fight for yourself and you get the people who love you and help you. Yeah, but like I said, sometimes the fight becomes too exhausting in and of itself. And I've experienced, no, no, I've experienced that myself. I need a disconnect and a recharge. Yeah, but the nunchuck people can't hurt you, Shad. (laughs) (laughs) It's not even, no, the nunchucks one didn't even. What, can you tell us what it was? Uh, No, 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 that's that's personal. Oh, okay. I I thought it was a YouTube thing. Should I continue? Yes. Go on. Oh, now I lost my spot. Okay. The worst thing about this whole year is I can't even admit this trauma because of all the rhetorical devices people have already come up with to dismiss it. Like what? That centering my own pain is evidence of me not listening. Does it occur to these people that you can listen and disagree with other people's conclusions? (laughs) That's a pot pot call in the kettle black there. Look, that's the thing, because I I actually get what she... But is this her... 
coming to a better understanding of the situation then? I don't, I think this will be Could you reread that last bit, last bit? Uh, you can... That centering my own pain is evidence of me not listening. Does it occur to these people that you can listen and disagree with other people's conclusions? No. Yeah, I do have to wonder about how she treated um, uh, J.K. Rowling in, in that regard, um, and the type of uh, emotional harm that had potential to. I think J.K. Rowling handles it remarkably well in terms of the criticism and attacks that get lobbed at her. But imagine if it didn't. I, it, like it easily has the potential to uh, make someone's mental health go bananas, as much as what's happening to Lindsay. Um, and is this the thing that maybe might help her realise that she has been... Honestly, like, Lindsay, you have contributed to this aggressive cancel culture, you know, um, mentality that's in the world. She's copying it now, and I am as opposed to it happening to her as I am to J.K. Rowling. Mm. Like, none of, neither of them deserve this, okay? Mm. And well, if you've done, if you've and, done, if you've done uh, it, though, you know? And I find it interesting that... The statement that she made about you have caused other people pain so uh, she is preempting the accusation that if she mentions how difficult and uh, you know all the pain that she's going through that it's not acknowledging other people's pain that people are accusing her of causing one if <laughs> if that tweet caused people legitimate pain and heartache to the point of ruining their lives I'm sorry, they're mentally imbalanced. That tweet is so innocuously inoffensive that if you are getting offended to the level that it's affecting Lindsay, is, to the emotional state that, say, is comparable to what, where Lindsay is at, you are emotionally unstable. You need to get professional help. I'm saying that sympathetically. You legitimately do. To be fair, is it so wrong to want less anime in the world? <laughs> is that an evil? I guess the action, isn't it? It depends what type of anime. I think there are aspects of anime that oh, yeah. definitely well, should be less of. Well, that's the point, you know? It's like, <laughs> look at... I don't know, let's grab a group in history. Ah, uh, the Germans. Okay? Let's look at what bad the Germans have done and contrast that with the bad that is in anime. Historically, the Germans have done some bad things. But what you're saying is anime is worse. No. <laughs> no. What are you saying? I was I'm trying to get the Anime point. could never be worse. But what I'm saying is, is like... Look at it's contributed more degeneracy. I'll admit that. There you go. The uh, Germans have as well. But like, I'm talking about which of the things. Not as much as the French. Oh, who's more degenerate, the French <laughs> or the Japanese? This is a question for the philosophers. <laughs> no, but like, what I'm saying is, of the thing taken into question, what is is it more good or more bad? What are you talking about now? The well, tweet, like, because the comparison is she made truly an inoffensive tweet, mm. and people are trying to. I think in the context of this, they're trying to say how dare Lindsay focus on her own um, mental health, you know, and um, uh, oppression or criticism she's received. How dare she focus on that when people are accusing that her tweet has caused people distress and offence. When that tweet should not, and if it did, like I said, whoa, wow. There's just no... I mean it as compassionately as I can. You do need to get some help if you're going to be offended at that tweet. Like that, it is not offensive. It was net one. Look at remember I was saying. Look at maliciousness. Did Lindsay in any way purpose make the tweet to actually offend people? What did, do you? No, there was no that? maliciousness in it. What did she actually say, word for word? Do we want to look up the tweet? Like Lindsay Ellis, um, uh, Rayal. Tweet. This is uh, her tweet, word for word, reading it out. Also watch Raya and the Last Dragon, and I think we need to come up with a name for this genre that is basically Avatar, the Last Bender, Reduxes. It's like half of all YA fantasy published in the last few years anyway. How dare she? <laughs> and it's probably objectively true. <laughs> like, I Am Number 4 was a completely different young adult novel. And nothing uh, to do with Twilight. Look, there was a, a huge visual similarity between uh, Raya, Last Dragon, and Avatar. It was a mishmash of Asian cultures in a fantasy depiction. All right, and uh, <laughs> I, 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 it's a step that like, the world has gone that far that this tweet was enough. Oh, I can't believe it. Like, and I don't. It's hard for me to believe that she got as much. Vitriol, like true, I I think in quantity she got 
a larger quantity of pushback because she's a more prominent individual than say a small individual who said something more overtly offensive like you know something about gender or whatever right but i actually think that the person who said something controversial about gender would have their criticism against that is vastly more aggressive more cruel more mean-spirited than what you could possibly be pushed to from a tweet like this that Lindsay gave. Mm. I mean, I'd make really makes like how could you say you are a terrible person? I hope you die and your whole livelihood destroyed from that. But the problem is, I think people could because people are so many people are just so far gone. Of course, it would be perfectly fine for her. Like, I think she, she is going through vastly more criticism and emotional stress mm. than her tweet ever caused anyone. Anyway, I, this is her preempting and assuming that's what the criticism will be. I haven't seen anyone say, how dare you be so distressed when your tweet caused this, but I think that's what the impression she has. That I'm weaponizing my fragile white womanhood, or whatever to point out, that having thousands upon thousands of people who have never met, who I have never met, in case she did, who you have never met hate you and say whatever will get them the most updoots, which I'm guessing is upvotes about this. Mm -hmm. In fact, traumatizing. That people I used to know uh, would flagrantly lie about me on Twitter.com to the tune of thousands of retweets and tens of thousands of likes, and I just have to sit here and take it. All right, so we, there's several things to break down. One, I really hope uh, Lindsay isn't invalidating her own trauma and grief because of her immutable characteristic of being no, she's a just certain nationality. So, yeah, I hope she's not because that shouldn't invalidate anyone's um, distress and hardships in life, okay? That she's not responsible for the colour of her skin. And it doesn't... Anyway, like... To judge people based on the colour of their skin seems a bit racist well, in my mind. Well, just actually, just... Shad, you're incorrect because racism is power plus prejudice. No. And as not. a white person, you have power and you are prejudiced. <laughs> she has one last sentence yeah. where she goes, uh, my, favorite, my favorite are the people who dismiss any potential harm I might have incurred as justified because I'm a wealthy white woman. I'm not wealthy. Uh, While well, these same people's hearts uh, positively bleed for Britney Spears. What happened with Britney Spears? Leave Britney alone? Is she referring to her? No, there was, old, a, or? there was other controversy know. with her dad and even, even Even Britney Spears herself admits that she's toxic. You've heard the song? Yes. Okay, whatever. I thought that was pretty good. Wow, there's a lot to break down in that one too. Maybe we'll have to skip over some things. It's just um, liberal self-hate. One, uh, how do people judge what wealth is? I mean... <laughs> if you have more money than me, uh, that like, is wealth. Because based on her views, uh, and just add sense of my own point of reference, mm. uh, she would be getting more money than I produce. Um, I would consider myself wealthy, but not super rich by any means, but mm. I'm certainly on the privileged side of the wealth, wealth spectrum. I've earned it through hard work. Um, but again, I actually look at like true poverty and if you're above poverty, like technically if you're living in a first world country, you're in the rich category in terms of all people on earth. If you have hot water, regular electricity, internet, and you're not in, it's easy to get food and stuff, especially if you're like governmental support you are actually in the vastly rich category of human society. Mm. Um, but again, it's where people point their things. I think she's trying to say she's not mega rich and people think she's mega rich. I think even though once you're rich, it doesn't solve all your problems. It doesn't. In actual fact, a lot of rich people have a lot of struggles. <laughs> a lot of problems. Look at the dude who made Apple. He still died of AIDS. Um, and yeah. Was it cancer AIDS? I don't know. Cancer. Look, oh. have people? Is this her saying people have been trying to invalidate her because of her success or wealth, like, or that she's preempting people? Probably to say that she's preempting because people will be like, "Oh, you're having a bad time." Well, there's children starving in Africa. Yeah, I feel that focusing on the blessings actually does help. You know, your own mental health. It helps with mine when I focus mm -hmm. on the blessings I have. The fact that I don't need to worry about... Well, look, sometimes I do need to worry about the bills because mm. there are bills that come in. I have employees to look like after. tax bills. Yeah, taxes and Adults. stuff. So I'm far beyond having no finance... So far from having uh, uh, no financial woes. 
far not. Far, I don't know. I think I'm contradicting myself. Far from hope. Yeah. Um, I am far from not having any financial. Worries. Far from not having. I don't know. Double Maybe negatives. Is that, uh, for, <laughs> like financial freedom? Is that the... Yeah, oh, anyway, I still obviously have many financial concerns and obligations to meet and stuff. You still have problems, even though yeah. you're more wealthy than most people. Yeah, yeah. Not um, by much, but by a little bit of a lead. Yeah, and um, it just makes me very grateful, and it helps, you know. Um, but hey, we're grateful too, man. Being more financially stable reduces certain elements of stress, but will never completely take them away in life, and will never take away... Uh, mental hardships or mental health issues or anything like that or health issues you know, it doesn't make life perfect in actual fact sometimes it can make life even worse because uh, man there are a lot of unhappy rich people I'll tell you what though being wealthy highlight it's the one pain that a poor person won't feel as bad as a rich person is being wealthy just highlights more of what you can't have does that make sense? if you're wealthy and you still can't get the things you want they probably won't be material things. That's an even that could be a bigger hardship. I don't know. I I, I think anyone given the choice would choose to have money versus being poor. I understand that, mm. right? But like I've known guys who have been wealthy because they've mm. learned day trading and they're like you know like a few years older than me. Mm. And they have no relationships and they're completely yeah. depressed. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and they, yeah. they have hundreds of thousands of dollars. Exactly, in the bank. money can actually sometimes, especially the pursuit, uh, the obsessive pursuit of money, can make your life miserable beyond belief. Uh, you should try and pursue happiness, not money. Um, and perhaps that's what Lindsay's doing. Like, I, I, her, her, whatever financial success, it can help reduce certain factors that can impact someone's happiness. Um, but it's not a guaranteed fact that it'll always improve, and uh, it's nowhere near a valid uh, reason to invalidate someone's hardships or more uh, difficulties. Mm. Don't think you should pursue happiness, though. You should pursue meaning. Happiness is a fleeting thing. Mm, yeah, see, I, like, because. When I say happiness, I don't mean fleeting joy. I mean yeah. genuine yeah. lasting happiness. Uh, and genuine lasting happiness usually only comes from pursuing things that have meaning. But yeah, well that's the thing, meaning justifies the pain. Yeah. Um, well, sometimes you need to experience pain to be happy, to understand what it's yeah. to actually appreciate things, yeah. I'll continue. Okay, um, then she continues. These people don't see how similar these talking points are to the same boomer bootstrap parenting styles that I thought most of us had agreed were abusive. That you need to toughen up, accept your punishment, accept that even if the reaction was outsized, that you did something wrong, because where there's smoke, there's fire. Grow a thicker skin. Um, let me share an alternative view. I actually feel that you need a balance. I think if you coddle someone to the point of making them unable to handle the hardships of life, that's actually a type of abuse. Um, and obviously I disagree that the uh, pick yourself up by this bootstrap mentality, I would never say is wholly abusive. I'm not sure if she's just being, uh, she's overemphasizing the point, okay? Uh, but yeah, I just, I have to obviously speak out and say I really disagree with that point that I think um, people need to be learn, uh, taught to try and handle the difficulties of life because guess what, Lindsay? You can't escape the world. Life is going to be tough. You're facing it right now. Um, and the more you're prepared to be able to handle hardships, the better you can weather them when they come. And one reason why you might be having so much difficulty right now, well, I don't know what your upbringing is, so I won't even, even presume to... Uh, um, um, no, but I do feel that anyone who is actually taught to deal with more hardship can obviously handle difficulties, perhaps similar to what you're going through, better, okay? Um, it's weird, right? I, uh, do, I'm not as well known as Lindsay Ellis. I'm mm. pretty significantly well known. I have a large enough online footprint. If you type in my name, you're going to get a lot of hits, okay? Mm. And so I'm a somewhat prominent individual, uh, but the term, levels of fame is always hard to gauge, especially for YouTube creators. Like if I asked a random person down the street, do you know who Lindsay Ellis is? They're going to be, who the hell is that? Okay. Mm. YouTube fame is vastly different to Hollywood celebrity fame. Mm. It's a, a big chasm difference. I think she's more prominently known online just because she, her videos get viewed more. She's a, a topic of discussion more because she's more controversial and things. So I wouldn't be able to say that I have experienced the same level of criticism uh, and, you know, pushback, but I've certainly received my own, a measure of my own, all right, and there are 
some of the worst lies you can imagine said about me, okay? Really, really disingenuous stuff with truly dedicated haters, people that just hate watch my content. And I think there, there are even people who have alert for my name wherever it comes up, where on Reddit or wherever it can, purely to just crap on me whenever they can. I turned that alert off though. Oh, I thanks. Did. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, it gets to that level, all right? Now, all I know is that there has been uh, like times of much greater controversy around me, especially if I upset certain groups and individuals, say something, you know. Miss Southern? Hmm? Miss Southern? Well, not even that. No, no, that was a, like, there's that, but that's not even the biggest. I was like, uh, it's usually when I say something controversial, controversial about HEMA is that there's a really uh, big collective yes. outrage well, against me. The nunchucks I was more able to laugh in. This was like the HEMA stuff was more genuine personal kind of attacks and stuff. So I've, I've, co I've copped it, right? But I'm still here, I'm okay, I was able to wear it. I'm not saying it wasn't stressful at times, mm. um, and times I just wanted to kind of unplug and have a break, right? Uh, but because I have experienced hardship and stuff, and I have been picking yourself up by that mentality, get back up, work harder, and uh, stop being a baby and all that stuff, does help me get through those difficult times more. And, I'm, and I was raised that way, and it's been a benefit and blessing to me in my life. Mm. I think you need to teach adults to be strong individuals. And that's what I mean. Like, it, it honestly feels like that statement is saying trying to teach people to be strong through the bootstrap, pick yourself up mentality is abusive. I, like, that's... I've never heard someone even go far as to call it abusive before. Mm, I have. Have you? Yeah, younger kids always talk about their parents being abusive because of how... Stop, what would they say? Stop crying? Yeah, stop crying, grow up or just disagreeing with their kids the very boomer mentality because oh. I hope people don't take me out of context because of course kids need love and sympathy and nurturing hmm. and stuff when yeah, I but sometimes they need a smack <laughs> but no, no I'm serious uh, sometimes they need discipline discipline uh, we are not endorsing no, look, smacking kids I was smacked as a kid and look how you turned out. Well, I mean, on, you know, typically on the butt, on the knee, not on the back of the head with a hammer, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, but like... No, no, look, obviously uh, discipline can go too far and there is elements of abuse, okay, that obviously exists. We're saying that discipline is needed and you do need to teach kids to handle the difficulties of life. Mm. And so I really like... This is one of those things that I think me and Lindsay would obviously see very differently to. I'd be interested to have a discussion on it, though, to see different perspectives, and maybe my opinion could be shifted or hers. I think this is, would be an interesting one. But, um, so in the context you're saying here, is she saying that, don't tell me to do that? Well, no, she's criticising those who are, uh, you know, calling her out for the tweet and everything, when she's, first of all, saying, well, you know, Britney Spears is doing the same, like, gone through mm -hmm. the same struggle as me, but you're on her side. And then they're basically abuse, or they're telling her to grow up and do the stuff. I don't know. It's such a confusing. Okay, yeah. Plot. Is she saying don't tell me to uh, toughen up and handle it because that's abusive? That's the same thing that you guys were. were, were we were that we all were calling abusive. Yeah, we're calling out before, but now you're doing it to me. All right. Well, one, uh, it wouldn't be hypocritical for someone to encourage that if they're not being hypocrites. Like, like if they actually believe that genuinely and never believed it was abusive in the first place. Um, it is an interesting context when trying and apply it to in her situation. Because I, everyone has their own individual capacities. I think they should all be encouraged to try and handle things strong and, you know, um, uh, but they have their limits. And I admit, when people reach their limits, you know. Well, it's like everyone is like, you know, the character sheets in like JRPGs where it's got like, mm -hmm. you've got a circle, it's got like strength, defense, da 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 da. And they're mm -hmm. all like, it's balanced in a way that there's some really strong, some really weak, some all rounders. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people... Okay, let's use me for an example. I'm very creative. I'm very open about what I believe. Yet mm -hmm. I'm probably the most unreliable person anyone has ever met. Is that not true? You are... You can be quite unreliable Well, there times. you go. And then you've got good old Nathan, who managed to set everything up and all that. But every once in a while... Every once in a while, something happens. <laughs> something happens. <laughs> So that's the, that's the thing. Everyone's got blind spots and weaknesses, and hopefully everyone's got some form of strength, you mm -hmm. know. 
And then some people who are all-rounders, and they're what we call normies. Yeah, yeah, look, if someone is so far, what Lindsay seems to be, and this almost seems like toying with suicidal thoughts, the pick-you-up-by-the-bootstrap things isn't going to help. And, uh, and so, no, she needs support, she needs her loved ones to mm. come around her, help her through this. Yeah, but we shouldn't bow down before the internet queen. Her friends should help her. I'm saying yeah. her friends okay. and family. I'm not, not saying, us. yeah. Well, like I said, I, don't, I think we can even see by context, we're not conceding on any of our standards just because she's going through a hard time. Mm. And I disagree with her as much as I did before. We're trying to present it in a more charitable way, which I think we should do with anyone, regardless of where they're at. And I'll try and do better at, and that's just a, you know, a thing of my own journey of self-improvement, okay? Uh, sometimes I fail at it, sometimes I'll do better. And uh, we're trying to be aware of it probably more so this time because someone is in a fragile state. We don't want to... Yeah. We'll just, okay, because we, yeah, we don't want to pile on the very thing that's causing her to have that difficulty. Um, I get, we, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you mean, especially since you know you're in a similar situation of fragility right now. And see, this is how you, the fat jokes now I'm going to <laughs> <Yeah. back a bit. laughs> hitting where it hurts. Like, really, this is crueler than me arguing it because I don't mean it, he means it, and I he knows I believe it. I, how many times have I told you, no, Shad, you're a handsome lad? No, I'm not. It rhymes, not anymore. It must be true. If it I, I was handsome once. I'm no, not you, you're a ha comments I, down I'll, below. I will be handsome once again. once... I regrow the part of me that has been cut out of my soul. Ladies, comments down below. Handsome lad, yay or nay? I think he is. Oh, when I have it, when I, when it's there, I will agree with you then. This guy. All right, all right. Let's continue. Uh, these same people who always crow about uh, believing victims, telling victims of public dog piles that they do not deserve claim their own trauma, let alone to process it because they deserved it. Okay, so this is a very valid point that she actually brings out here, right? Lindsay is claiming some very severe mental trauma here, and yet the people who are saying believe all victims are probably getting the same group who uh, are not get willing to believe her in this instance or give her the charity that she's asking for here, which is really sad. And, you're, and she's right that they only give the charity to those whom they deem are worthy of it. And they're complete, and I feel it's very hypocritical that they will then be completely deny the uh, su claimed suffering of other people. So yeah, she's right to point that out. Mm. Um, there's no such thing as cancel culture. There's no incentive or reward st structure. Hang on, is she saying this um, uh, sarcastically in in continuation of what she was saying before, or is this unironically? This is. Because I, I, this is, uh, read the last few sentences before okay. it and we'll go into it. So, so these are the same people who always crow about believing victims, telling mm -hmm. victims of public dog piles that they do not deserve uh, to claim their trauma, let alone process it because they deserved it. There's no such thing as cancel culture. There's no incentive or reward structure in place like, on places like Twitter to call people out. There are no upvotes, faves, follows, retweets. For hating to take on whoever yeah, yeah. is trending. Yeah, she's speaking sarcastically because yeah. I think she's she's obviously experienced. Because that's the thing. If she's saying there's no such thing as cancer culture when she's in the process of, of being cancelled, like it, yeah, so yeah, she's uh, yeah, and especially the you know there's no incentive to up you know to get upvotes when you hate on people. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, sarcasm. sarcasm. Doesn't know how to not get cancelled. Be louder than them. It's that simple. No, 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 no. If they have control over certain institutions and get you mm. fired, right? Doesn't matter how loud you are. Well, look at yeah. Alex Jones. He's a loud person. Mm -hmm. They cancelled him off everything, and he's still going strong. But just because he is still making media doesn't mean he wasn't cancelled. He was. Well, you can still, you can still lose the battle. You can the survive war. being cancelled, is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Keep fighting. Be louder. Yeah, and obviously Lindsay would be able to survive. She could just make content anymore at all, um, and all the support would be there for her, and her content would be very favoured by YouTube, as it always yeah. is, because she has the better politics, or the more accepted politics, I should say. So just delete Twitter. Um, but she can't deal with the emotional stress, and uh, which I think is pretty self-evident. And I think it comes from putting too much stock in people's opinions online. Mm. Well, well, I think she... I, look, this is me assuming, but I, her and a lot of people, I feel, 
have thrived off of uh, public validation and attention. Hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> I do. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I've, uh, you know, appreciated the attention as well. But I've always tried to keep myself grounded and not put nearly uh, much stock in it. Because uh, if it, one, it's probably not true. But two, if it turns around on you and that's where you're drawing your personal um, uh, validation and self-worth from, it's going to ruin your life. Yeah. You need to draw your self-worth from what is truly correct about yourself, what's truly true about yourself. Also, from what your loved ones believe about you as well, okay? I mean, oh, I actually... I don't want to do that. Yeah, probably. Uh, well, for me, I have a different one. I draw my self-worth from what I believe God thinks about me mm. and not anyone else. And that's only the only person I need to please. And that actually has helped me out. And look, even if you don't believe in God, I hope you can acknowledge the mental health benefits that has given me throughout my life. Even when I've been under tremendous criticism, uh, feels like I'm being attacked from all sides. If I could tell myself, uh, like ask myself, have I done the right thing in the eyes of God and feel that in my heart, that is true. Doesn't matter what the world thinks of me and I can bear it. And so even if you don't believe in God, I'm letting you know that is a true reality and benefit that I've received in my life as a result. Yeah, I don't know where my version of that is. I don't know what it is that motivates me or keeps me justified to myself. No, well, something I, you can explore for yourself. Maybe it's the pursuit of truth. Could be. Yeah. I reread the 2015 essay Hot Holostatic Load for the first time in years Ew. last night. Hot what? What was it? Hot Holistic Load? Yeah. What does that even mean? <laughs> Don't know. I mean, come on! For the first time in years last night, I could not stop crying. Even reading some of these passages now, I can't stop crying. Uh, this Judge was written words. from the perspective of a trans femme and discusses some rhetorical devices used to demonize trans women specifically, which obviously does not apply to me, but some of this is spot on. I would be interested if people were willing to read this and reframe it in the sense of uh, religion and how it would apply. Yep, and how religions, religion is a vastly a manifestation of someone's self-identity and how they frame their worldview and life and who they are as an individual. Uh, because that's how you should uh, be able to figure out if logic is valid or not, or a standard is valid. Because if a standard is valid based on certain context, apply the same context mm. in a different situation, but as long as it's the same context, you can see if the, the uh, logic is, is true or not. Um, is this a really long part, though? I'll be interested in some of it. But That's yeah. a really long post. I mean, this is... Oh. All right, we'll start it, we'll see how we go. Okay. One of the most common tools of exclusion is through mobbing, which is rarely talked about because unlike rape, murder, etc., it's not as easy to pin on a single person or scapegoat. Mobbing is emotional abuse practiced by a group of people, usually peers, over a period of time through methods such as gaslighting, rumor mongering, and abstractionism. Abstractionism? Yeah. Um, it's most undocumented in, it's most documented in workplace or academic environments, uh, key points of capitalist tension, but is thoroughly institutionalized into feminist, queer, and radical spaces as well. Here is why it is horrible. One, it has an unusually strong power to damage the victim's relationship to society because it can't be written off as an outlier. Can I, so, at the moment, this sounds like they're just trying to give a subsection or reclassification of a type of bullying. Basically. Look, uh, uh, this is all just word salad to me. No, no, yeah, yeah, but I'm not an idiot. I'm not saying bully, oh, look, bullying does exist. But they're just trying to point out a more specific type of bullying um, in this sense. Yeah. Sorry, there's just so many words. And they're calling this is it. Why it I and don't. they're just, well, and they're just calling it mobbing. Only. Yeah, mobbing. Um, like, we all know what bullying is. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, it does exist in you know the circles there, but exi bullying can exist anywhere. Yeah. And it. And you think, uh, anyway, um, so uh, is she saying it in the context that it happened to trans people, but then she's also experienced a similar she's type of she's... bullying or mobbing yeah. against her? Yeah, like, so what? she talks about, uh, d defines it more, talks about uh, PTSD and mobbing typically occurs in these places and yada yada yada. Um, 
And she goes on to quote a, a helicopter story. The Isabel Fall case is almost a textbook example about how online mobbing harms people. You mean, so, online bullying, I would, which is, I, and that, yes, like, bullying online can harm people, driven people to suicide, like, you know, people can be, yes, of course, mm. no one's denying that, and look, if she's trying to validate that the type of criticism and uh, aggression she's faced should be acknowledged because it can uh, cause legitimate harm and that she should be given some leeway, of course, I'm not, like, I'm not denying, I, but I think some people are trying to dismiss it and stuff. Um, and from the very beginning, I think not only me, but many people have said her tweet was like so harmless that to cause the backlash it did is astounding. And it should reveal some true concerns about certain groups and their ideologies and what they're willing to prioritize. Yeah, she continues to say, uh, and how these people who participate in these mobs never engage in any self-reflection. Yeah, I think we're all thinking the same thing, um, and that, and I'm not sure if Lindsay is because she was capable of saying that. Like, if anything, I, I whatever, I, look, I don't know what stocks you you know consider us or anyone you know watching this. I would encourage anyone though, especially Lindsay that hopefully this would cause her own self-reflection because again i've seen some pretty clear examples of lindsay encouraging a similar type of not encouraging but certainly make, doing actions that would absolutely uh lead or encourage hate mobs to go after individuals and encourage cancelling and stuff like that even recently where she told um Tom Scott to delete the video he did with Jill Bearup because Jill Bearup said something potentially phobic that she, in a post that was several years ago, that she deleted that people are still trying to cancel her for. Lindsay said that Tom should delete the video, which is essentially dis making him disassociate himself with Jill Bearup, which is an act to help cancel Jill Bearup. Mm. I hope, Lindsay, will you be able to reflect on this and, and see that that's encouraging a similar type of hate, maybe not on the same scale, but it's a similar type of mentality against other individuals that you're facing yourself. I hope that would cause some self-reflection, genuinely. <laughs> Even then, Shad. Like, you know who else self-reflected in history? Narcissist. That's what, he, he self-reflected. And it, what I'm trying to say is, right, even if you do self-reflect, you think, hmm, what have I done? You can still arrive at the conclusion, I've done nothing wrong, I'm perfect. Yeah. And that's typically what these people do. Uh -huh. But I think that's what she's saying, like people, these people have so, you know, they can't, or anyway, that they can't realise that they're doing the very thing that they're, and I find Lindsay is literally a p pushing the same logic mm. on the people who have been attacking her as the logic that now I'm proposing to her, is that you are seeing people treat you in a negative way that you are now pointing out that they have said is bad. But by doing that, you should also be aware that you expose your own actions as being bad as well, mm. okay? Because you have encouraged cancellation of other people. And uh, I found the um, JK Rowling video very poor and distasteful. Um, and uh, yeah, far from, I wouldn't even call it like, I don't. Look, I'm trying to be charitable here, and so it's hard for me to express my feelings on it without me falling into negativity. Because, that, mm. so yes, yeah, self-reflection. I would agree. <laughs> this is why people should have principles and actually think about their principles. Consistent principles. Now, why am I in a position to say it so arrogantly? You know, in this. No, because this is my standard. I feel cancellation and going after people for things even that you find offensive to be bad, don't do it. Because that just validates them trying to cancel you and you say something offensive to someone else. Uh, I'm not going to touch on Yang's original comments about fall or the pushback to them. But what was downright charming in its lack of self-awareness about the whole situation was that the way people used fall's trauma to hurt Yang. Uh, the way they invoked fall being checked into a hospital while Yang said something about fall and helicopter story or having absolutely no idea what was going on in Yang's private life. 
What's partially galling is how many people accused Yang of sending a trans person to the hospital with PTSD, while apparently being completely oblivious uh, to the fact that they could also to the fact that they could be very well doing the same thing to Yang, a non-binary trans person. There was no lesson learned on the nature of mindless dogpiling, just Twitter doing what Twitter does. Failing to examine systems of abuse while continuing to perpetuate them by laying into a new scapegoat. So, because genuinely, I actually... Uh, uh, Lindsay, I do believe you have perpetuated certain systems of abuse, like cancellation as well. Um, and so when I hear this, I can't help it for it to come off somewhat hypocritical, because... Uh, you're pointing out certain things that I have seen, or I believe, and look, I'd love to have a discussion and you could defend yourself if I'm misrepresenting your views or anything like that. And I'd be really interested to know what your views are on the matter after all this thing about cancellation and all that stuff. I mean, I, this is, come on, come on Oz. Um, there is another kind of launching off point, like from what Lindsay is saying here. And it feels like someone who is abused it almost feels like the uh, context, and if I'm wrong, I'm happy to admit it, and I'm more than happy to be corrected on this, that someone who is abused deserves more sympathy and compassion if they're trans than compared to someone who is abused or gone through a similar terrible experience if they're not trans. And to me, I think that's very wrong. I think if someone has gone through legitimate abuse, regardless if they're trans or not, mm. deserves compassion and help and sympathy. The fact that we're willing to show less sympathy because of someone's immutable characteristics, if they're identifies differently, if they might be male or white or anything like that, is horribly bigoted. I think anyone who goes through any type of trauma, like legitimate trauma and hardship, deserves sympathy and compassion and help. Isn't that the truly right and just and good thing to do? Hmm. Currently not. And I, Same with people who are trans or any other minority, if they're going through legitimate abuse okay, and trauma, we should try and help them out. Problem is when people say your beliefs and opinions causes trauma and therefore you should change your beliefs and opinions because they are traumatic, they traumatize people. That's where we have an issue. I'll tell you what though, I do agree with them on that point at, right now because her words just are trauma, I just, I get, this would put me to sleep is what I'm saying. I can't listen to this word salad all the time. This is why I can't really communicate with these people. Just, mm -hmm. Like, am I the only one that feels this way? No, I try and uh, communicate. I try and be. Patient. No, but do you understand what I'm saying, right? If someone just keeps going. You just like, you got to sign off at some point. You got to say you, we've been nice. People to have watch. different. No, people have different capacities, and you can only handle so much. I get it. Yeah. Yes, I was like, as a man of few words, I think you should get straight to the point, which is funny working here <laughs> where <laughs> we have hours of what are content. You, what are you trying to say there, Nathan? I'm concise. I am... oh, I mean, if if you'd seen these two this morning talking about the Matrix, <laughs> I only go... do it because he does it first. <laughs> you just go back and forth. I'm but concise. I think this is her way of trying to explain everything that's going up in her head. I think she has lots of different whys going around, and this is her just trying to lay out in a way that is understandable for people. I think she's she trying to know. communicate. I think she honestly doesn't know what she's trying to say. No, I think she does. That's just my personal perspective after hearing all that. She has no idea what she's trying to talk about. No, she's actually making a mini essay. The, the way that she normally does. That's mini? With, yeah, yeah, the, this is mini for her. Um, and she said she was going to make this into a YouTube video. Remember? This oh, is like, I would this appreciate is a, that much more. This is a script for a video. Um, yeah, some instead. pictures would have been nice. Some uh, pictures, yeah. <laughs> Maybe actors mm. doing things. Make it into a Marvel sort of thing. And just ending off on my thing, right? No, opinions, okay, beliefs, shouldn't be abusive. Otherwise, that means anyone who disagrees with my religious beliefs are abusive towards me. If we're going to be consistent with our standards, but then, no, no, they have a hierarchy of whose oppression is more valid than another, which I feel is founded irrevocably on preferencing people over another based on certain characteristics that one might call immutable which I cannot help but conclude is grossly bigoted. I feel, as an individual, a person, their individual trauma should be taken on a case-by-case -case basis and be considered seriously regardless of where they come from, the colour of their skin, their sexual orientation, the creeds that they believe in. And truly ask yourself, which is a more kind, liberal and ultimately 
tolerant perspective. Let us continue. Okay. She continues. Feminists slash queer spaces are more willing to criticize people than abusive systems because they want to reserve the right to use their systems for their own purposes. At least attacking people can be politically viable, especially in a token system where you benefit directly from their absence, or where your status as a good feminist is dependent on constantly rooting out evil. When the bounty <laughs> <Sound like Templar>. <laughs> <laughs> When the bounty system calls for the ears of evil people, well, most people have an ear. Have an effing ear. Oz had to leave us, he can only handle so much. Everybody has different <laughs> capacities. <laughs> um, Alright, so this last one... Yeah... She, it seemed like she was saying that, you know, to be considered an ally, you must stand in lockstep with anyone that they're attacking and criticising mm. and go after. Is that, is that a correct interpretation of what she's saying? Anything? I think she was also talking about, like, in other systems, you can criticise a larger group, where with those feminist queer groups, they you can't criticise certain people, but other people you directly target. Well, if that's what she's saying, it's, yeah, see, that I seems to be the, the reality of the situation as well. And I would think if someone has truly done something wrong and is worthy of criticism, they deserve it regardless of <laughs> their orientation, their identity, or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, we'll continue. Um, something else that was also inevitable. I was going to quit YouTube. I knew I couldn't do it forever, that I was running out of steam, that I was sick of the increasing dehumanization inherent, that I just didn't do... that that I just didn't have anything to say about movies anymore. The plan was to end with Love Never Dies, since it seemed to be the best place to end. So, this is it. So, she sounded like she was planning on quitting anyway, yeah. but she wanted to quit on a good note. Yeah. And, yeah, some people just lose steam, lose the passion, if she didn't have anything interesting to yeah, say on things to say. YouTube. Yeah. yeah. So, perhaps then... <sighs> it's interesting. If she was considering it already, this obviously gave her the last push where she's, like, done with it all. Mm. Um, uh, but she's obviously leaving in a different way than what she intended. I think, yeah. what, what else is she saying on this one? Because um, then she continues and says... Uh... Uh, so it was a good place to end with some semblance of energy rather than keeping on until I've withered away to nothing. Uh, what happened to me in March and April hastened it, uh, but this was always inevitable. So she does say that mm -hmm. she was going to quit. Um, but she continues and says, My initial plan was to leave YouTube for Nebula, but I realise now that this was only entrenching myself in a more intimate form of harm rather than the broad buckshot kind of uh, s stuff that YouTube invites. Okay, so this is, what this is really contextualizing here is that doing YouTube was making her unhappy. Yeah. Uh, and it was just contributing to her unhappiness. And uh, even going to Nebula, it would contribute in a more intimate, You'd closer focus it way. More, yeah. Um, and this thing, if if it's making her unhappy, yeah, do the smart thing to you know make your life better and find what does make you happy. Totally agree. Yeah, well, she goes on and says, I won't go into detail, not right now anyways, but I can't do video content uh, for them either. I can't make content, period. I just can't do this anymore. There's no healing as long as this attachment to the thing that makes you suffer, and the thing in this case is being in the public eye at all. So... <sighs> I would still say she's essentially getting cancelled, though, because she comes out and says that the, what happened after the tweet has caused it to... Yeah, so much harm to her. But also, she... she says, like, making content is making her unhappy. But I, what I think is happening is it's the, the, it's the negativity, the, the criticism mm. from her content is what's causing the unhappiness. Yeah. Um, and it's a culmination of things, because she has her critics, and I probably will can say I'm one of them. I disagree with a lot of what she says, and uh, even though I fully admit her skills in making content, her ability for rhetoric and stuff are very talented, but yeah, I will criticise her content, and so there's the criticism from that, but then there's the criticism of people that are supposed to be her allies or fans or anything, that are supposed to be on the same ideological uh, spectrum, that... It really does seem like 
this that ideology will eat itself like no no one is going to be above reproach you you do one thing and uh if it's over the line in any way and Lindsay didn't think that she was stepping over the line in that tweet no she wouldn't have tweeted it then yeah, yeah exactly so if you think anyone is safe no they're not how could you get how could you possibly be an online figure at all then if you're going to uh, place your uh, self-worth and validity on the response like that because i think she probably would have been able to survive if it was just when i say critics like me i think there are a lot of people more aggressive than me um, um but i think she would even be able to survive them if she had so mm. i think what's really affected her was the fact that there were people that she said like well once her friends that now caught you know, lying Calling about her, her on yeah. twitter and stuff i think it's different as well when it's your obvious critics who, for example, with you, Shad, you just disagree with her. You're not commenting <clears> on her videos and criticising all the things that she's saying and messaging her on Twitter and stuff, because I think a lot of the problems she's probably having is with people who are just... They eat, live and breathe criticising her. Yeah, well, that's how they get their validation and attention. Um, uh, there's a hate mob, and so if you can encourage the mob to support you, you know, they go after it, right? There is an aspect where it seems like she is legitimately drawing less satisfaction just out of making content, period, and mm. just commenting on videos. And so, uh, obviously, yeah, if that's where it's going and you're not enjoying it, time to move on. Yeah. We're nearly done. Mm -hmm. um, but all I know now is that being in the public eye, that being in the public eye at all is a losing game. And I regret all of it. Wow. I regret everything I've ever stood up for. Stood... I've ever stood up for anyone. It always backfires. I regret every time I pushed back against something unjust. It was always just used to hurt me. I regret every time I stood up for myself. I never did it correctly. I regret every time I showed any vulnerability. Just more ammunition to be used against me later. I regret every time I ever tried to play the game with peers and colleagues. They will drop you the second you aren't popular on Twitter anymore. Okay, a couple of things. One, not everyone. All right? Um, I, for instance, yes, I will look to myself. I stand by my friends and associates, even if they come under attack. All right? Um, uh, example. All right? Um, Daniel Green is a YouTuber who has been praising the Wheel of Time TV series, and I have been criticizing it. And Daniel Green has come under a lot of criticism lately as a result. I still think he's a great guy. I still love his content. I'm still following him on Twitter and everything like that. Even if we become... And I know we disagree vastly politically. Mm. Vastly so. But, no, that shouldn't be what I get. First, not everyone is like that, Lindsay. Okay? And if we were friends, no, I wouldn't have abandoned you. Because I'm not like that. And I know people who aren't either. And I can even point to real-life circumstances and realities that even if people become viciously hated, if they are friends, I will still be friends with them. Even and because like, I there's someone who you loathe who am I I'm actually on good associated terms with and people have tried to cancel me just because I know this individual and I'm not going to disassociate myself from him because I've actually been able to talk to him on a one to one level and know that he's actually a good guy and the vast amount of criticism against him are actual lies I've looked to the sources and yeah we're talking about Carl Benjamin Saga of a card here okay. Is actually a genuinely good guy and so many of the things that are lobbed against him are disgusting vilifying lies and the individual himself he actually well he might have, uh, he's changed a lot since the past okay and he has a far more compassionate disposition these days and is a good man all right and uh, but people will not be willing to forgive anyone okay and uh, this is what I mean like you know <laughs> if you want to actually try and put on a uh, effect on a metric about was it beneficial for my online reputation in I've done an online discussion with no it wasn't it's harmed my on online reputation mm. but I'll stand by my friends and people who I know are good people regardless of what it does to me because that's what good people do and the reality is the people that have done this to you are not good people but there are good people in the world all right and uh, just like other people who i disagree with and by the way if you think that i agree with everything about carl i'm religious okay he's very anti or he is irreligious and has made 
He's actually, he's been, he's now acknowledged certain aspects of religion that are beneficial more so lately because people change, people evolve to think that they're all they're saying based on hot takes I've done in the past. But he's made past videos very aggressively against religion, so of course I disagree vastly on heaps of things. Uh, doesn't mean I can't be friends with them. Okay, we should not have guilt by association and we should not be willing to be friends with people who hold diametrically opposed views to ourselves. I'd be willing to be friends with you, I'd be willing to be a friend, and I am w friends and willing to be w people who are on the left and hold different opinions. Daniel Green is a great one, I've got family members as well, alright? And I could list more. So no, people aren't like that, only bad people are. And I'm sorry that you've been associated and have to find out that so many people have betrayed you like that. I think it's genuinely, like regretful and it would be heartbreaking in your position. I really commiserate with you uh, for that and that so many people have attacked you and abandoned you because of that. They're not good people and shame on them. Yeah. Okay. Um, but also the other thing is when she she regrets everything she's done. How heartbreaking is that? Look, I disagree with so much of what she says, right? Uh, but look at what this mob has done. Okay, broken an individual who's actually on their side because they're so unforgiving. And I'll finish it off, mm -hmm. Chad, but this gets even, it get, does get worse. Okay. okay. Um, it's all hollow and brittle, and if there's one thing I have learnt this year, it's how, uh, you know, it's how, ex it's how expendable I am. The good, progressive, sift straight, wealthy white men keep on trucking and coming out on top because deep down they know that the system they profess to stand against ultimately exists to benefit them. And to all the people telling me I need to grow... Can I just pause there? Right? Yep. I am a cis white male. I'm not ashamed of it. But I also try and to push for a world that will benefit all people regardless of their immutable characteristics. Uh, I think you have vastly deeper and more complex views to try and justify that opinion, so I can't really comment on the specifics. Uh, but there's so much more that could be said to push back against that as well. Um, and it's f interesting that she says, like, it's the cis white men who are succeeding. Lindsay, you are succeeding more than me. Okay? I have more subscribers than you, yet your videos get pushed by YouTube vastly more. I'm sorry, you are actually more privileged in the YouTube ecosystem than me, all right? And uh, it's not to say that there isn't audiences for my videos. Some of my videos have done exceptionally well, all right? But there's way more to the whole picture, okay? And so, it is not a system that only privileges white men, like I said, okay? Um, yeah, very interesting. And uh, this is just, she's, she's become another victim of the cancel culture, really. To the point where she's been willing to say that she regrets everything that she's done. Sorry, keep going. The, yeah, so she finishes up and says, To all the people telling me I need to grow a thicker skin or remove myself from the conversation altogether, you are right. I don't have it in me to do the former, so I shall do the latter. Hope all, hope mm. your new year is better than this. There it is. Honestly, uh, Lindsay, I do genuinely feel sorry for you. I regret all, like, I haven't caused any of this. I don't think I have. Um, uh, I, I, look, I criticise you. Maybe that's contributed in some way. But I really don't think I've ever called for your cancellation or, uh, or anything like that. Um, but I do feel sorry for you, and genuinely, the distress that you're going through, which seems to be quite extreme, I hope you can find some uh, happiness, some recovery, okay, with your loved ones, and if that does need talking to some people, even professional help, I hope you find that out as well. Uh, I wasn't making this video in any way to try and contribute to your distress, that's not the intention, but I did have a lot to comment on throughout this whole situation, because I think it speaks to a lot of what's going on in society, and it comes into that point I wanted to make, and I'll end off on it once again, is that we as a society need to get along with people we disagree with and accept differences in ideology and have more diversity of opinion and be willing to accept that people are different and treat them with just still goodwill, kindness. That's what, that's what we need. That's what I was trying to show in this video as well to you. 
because I think that is the ultimate answer, and it means part of it. This is the difficult thing. It does actually mean not taking offence or being offended at things, especially when they're it's other people's opinions. And look, maybe even look. I'll even go further. You can take offence. Sometimes we can't control our emotions, and we will be legitimately offended. Okay. We may, might not be able to control that, but we can control what we do afterwards. And we can always choose a better path. And we can choose to not hate the person, or overly judge them, or try and understand where they're coming from, and choose to still love the, have the capacity to love them. Or even uh, just not hate them or just ignore them. Any number of things can reduce the amount of hate and ill will between all mankind. And so... Lots of things to talk about. That's why we decided to do uh, um, a different kind of video that we don't usually do, but devote a whole video onto this bit of topical news that has come up. So we do appreciate anyone who has watched for watching, and uh, we will see you on the next watch.